Welcome to the Geek Home World Podcast. I'm your host, Ed, a.k.a. The Savage Tech Man. We talk film, TV, and tech, all from a geek perspective. You can find us on X, Instagram, Facebook, and you can subscribe and follow on YouTube at Geek Home World. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Be a part of the Geek Home World. <laughs> Thank you. I never got a standing oh, ovation. That for me. <laughs> oh, was it? Okay. Well, you, you deserve it for being here and uh, making time out of your busy uh, schedule. Anyway, welcome, everyone. This is... Uh, a mini, mini historic episode. I don't for a lot of reasons. This is um, Geek Home World episode 170. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it only took me 10 years to get here. <laughs> exactly. And I've got I've got a, a special guest here, longtime friend and collaborator, and uh, who's uh, very uh, prosperous in his own right. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so welcome to this episode. We are talking, it's a live stream here. This is episode 170 of the Geek Home World podcast, our live stream. Mutant Liberation Begins. Right. Yay. I was expecting your Magneto action figure to show up for that one with the end. I, I, I don't have the 97 one, but uh, okay. I, and I didn't I didn't go digging. I didn't have, actually, I didn't have time to go digging for so who is this Harry Klingon that's in my video here on YouTube in the live stream? Let's see. His name is Digital Caveman of Digital Caveman Presents. And he's got a, awesome. you have a channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. He yeah, has a channel. It's, it's right on there in the in the in the crawl the screen. You can see it. YouTube.com. Under my name. Under your name. Oh, yeah, it's under his name. There you go. YouTube.com forward slash. Oh, please be sure you. You do that and do a forward slash join so you can see my new membership offerings. Oh, you have new membership offerings? Would you like to tell us about them? <laughs> well, I don't I don't have the stuff sitting right in front of me, so I can't tell you. Okay. What well, you just go lie in. to me and you tell me to, a little you have bit. To go in and check it out. You know, I've got some stuff set up. Uh, some of the tiers get early videos. So and everything, you know, everything for next week. And this might not always be true, but uh, yesterday I got everything for next week uploaded, finished and uploaded. So if you are a member with that tier, then you could be watching my videos right now. That's true. And if and if I ever get to that point, I promise I'll actually. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> I'll set something up in a timely manner and all that, and it'll be up and ready. It. <laughs> I almost made it on time. I was technically here two minutes early for my li own live stream, but <laughs> anyway, um, this this normal. this <laughs> this podcast is not sponsored by anyone naturally, but I'm having my protein bar, so <laughs> we're gonna have a little protein while we we talk about this because I'm gonna need my energy, right? You're gonna, need, you're gonna need some energy to talk about these mutants, huh? Yeah, and then I might have to open the door, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> I took a big bite of that. I shouldn't have done that. Don't choke on it, man. I don't want to choke on it. Ding, ding, ding. ding, ding. Oh, while we're here, while I'm, I'm chewing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Ding that bell. Do all that stuff. Whatever makes you happy. Um, you won't truly be happy until you are subscribed to this subscribe, YouTube channel. Like, and share, subscribe, ding the bell. Tell a friend, call your neighbors, talk to your family you hadn't talked to in a while, and tell them that call they need enemy. to go <laughs> call your enemies because we'll take them too. Because we want to be like Magneto. We're trying to do better. Please don't let me let you down. <laughs> Somebody, oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk about this. But anyway, Geek Home World, go to youtube.com forward slash at Geek Home World 4248. And when I get up to 100 subs, I can make that actually I say that. I can change that. So we're at 52 subs. So we picked up a good amount of subs. I was 999% over the last 28 days. So I've done uh, those, percentages, 
sometimes those percentages make you feel really good. Especially when you're terrible at math like I am. So, you know, things like that matter. But, uh, uh. but yeah, so um, I'm looking for subs. I'm looking for, um, I'll take pizza, but I'll take subs. I'll take pasta. Oh, no, subscribers would be great. Pasta, um, pasta for you. This is this feels this is very unscripted. I had a plan where I was going to map out the two episodes to me, my X Men, and um, that never worked. <laughs> it never worked. And Mutant Liberation begins. That's where I got the title. So last week's episode one sixty nine was me getting psyched up and previewed uh, previews of 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 uh, <laughs> new <laughs> episodes for X Men ninety seven and. You know, I've been terrified because we're getting mixed messages in the press, but it all debuted. And I tell you what, Disney, I have not felt happy about something that yes, Disney's had a hand in in years. I haven't years. been this si excited about a Marvel project in years. And I wasn't, yes, I wasn't super excited about it. I was <laughs> before it came on because, you know, stuff that's been going around and and the it, may, it may end up that that stuff might be right and but I'm, i hope not because this show is off to a great start those first two episodes i was not disappointed excellent it, it start excited about it again much more excited than say a certain mm. trailer dropped this week oh dear where are my acolytes when I need them? Oh, which I just, I will honestly say I'm not interested at all in what well, I've seen so far. You're going to put me on a tangent already where we talk about the acolyte and um, Star Wars we Theory. We don't have to talk about it. We won't, but I'm going to talk about it real quick since you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, they dropped the acolyte. Is it a good trailer? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty decent trailer. Um, it's definitely skewing... <laughs> I had to look really hard. Oops, sorry, my sound just blew out there. I had to look really hard to find the males in there, no matter what species they were. And I noticed that, that we're talking about diversity in the acolyte. It was mostly female humanoids. I mean, female okay, there earthlings. Was, or not earthlings. There was, I mean, there was an, an Asian dude. Okay. But there was a black dude. Or yeah. African American dude, you know, whichever. I I, mm -hmm. I don't know who prefers what, but there it is. And then the rest of the the cast. Look, well, I was I wasn't even going to talk about race, so that's not an issue really to me. But it's well, I just mean, the female yeah. to male ratio. When they're and then and then the alien yeah. to non alien yeah. because this is Star Wars, you're supposed to have a lot of different like they did a comparison yeah. star wars theory did a comparison where you, he's he's like he just showed just random clips from the different films and they were you know you'd have four or five different races of from different planets uh, different parts yeah. of the galaxy this was basically a bunch of um not or what would you call them in star wars they wouldn't be earth based they would be like earthling like yeah. i don't know what would you yeah. say they would be human Human like, Look. yeah, which is fine, you know. But I, I wanted a little bit more, you know, to make it feel more encompassing of the galaxy. I'll but just, we're gonna get to the, the crux of the issue that I have with it. It has been confirmed that because it's gone back and forth that it's 100 years before the events in Phantom Menace 100 years. So Darth Plagueis would be alive in this period his um sith master uh tenebrous would be alive definitely alive in this and, and not, not in this. yoda's well, gonna be yeah, yoda would be there and yoda may show up we don't know but i'm, I'm star wars theory in his video today that he dropped some lady was on there debunking saying that everybody who is making fun of Acolyte are racist, and that's not true. You can't paint with a brush that broad. And he was just debunking all the claims oh. that they made. And, well, hold on, let, let me finish. And 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 they also said in this article, obviously written by somebody that doesn't really know the lore of Star Wars, 
and Star Wars Theory, you should check his video out. I don't know the name of it, but I saw it this afternoon, and he debunked that, plus he debunked the fact that this is taking place 100 years before the events in Phantom Menace. Well, uh, Grant, um, Jedi Master Mundy in Episode 1 said, how could the Sith return without us knowing they've been extinct for a millennia, which is a thousand years? And so that flies in the face of canon because the prequels are canon, you know? And well, I have a problem with that if we start seeing Sith. I'm sorry, the Jedi would know. Somebody would have known, you know? So that presents a problem. Assassin or whatever she is fighting these, trying killing these Jedi's. Do I think, and I agree with Star Wars theory on this, I I think it's an interesting concept. When I heard the concept for this series, and I'm still trying to keep an open mind, and yes, I will watch it, unless it's just total garbage. Um, um, But It it has the first episode to get me, and if it doesn't get me in the first episode, I'm done with it. But Disney Plus has shown us the first couple episodes, like X-Men 97, the first couple episodes could be exceptional, perfect. And then it could just it could be right down a hill. Yeah, I don't no. think that's going to happen with X Men '97, oh, but God. I'm super optimistic, and I'm very good about living in the moment. <laughs> so I am enjoying, like Qui Gon Jinn said, "Be mindful of the living force. Be mindful of the moment." You know, yeah. so not so, at the expense of the future. Yeah, yeah. Or the, not, not the exp- whatever he said something yeah, about yeah. the present or the future or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. Keep your thoughts centered in the here and now, Obi Wan. Oh gosh. And you know, I just watched I just watched like 90% of episode one a month All right. ago. So fingers crossed for Acolyte. We'll see. We'll we'll be covering it. But that leads me to you mentioning episode well, one. Was, you were just I, watching. What I was gonna say about Acolyte. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Is you know these people are out hollering, oh you're if you don't like it, you're a racist. Da, 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 da. You know who these same people are? They're the same ones that told us. Uh, we were a bunch of douchebags if we didn't like the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. So same damn people. All right. You're about to make me do an aside here because I saw Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yeah, let's know. Uh, hush. I don't I'm not going to. I won't give you any spoilers. I promise. Overall, my thoughts were. For me, Afterlife was the perfect send off. Couldn't have got any better for the OG cast, right? And I like the new cast. So this film should have been the first completely, you know, it should have been like first contact, you know, in Star Trek, where you had generations that bridged the two Enterprise right. teams or generations of it. Generations, not right. Uh, right. First Gen- well, generations had them together. That was the bridge. And then first contact was the first next generation right. film. It should have been something in that vein. And it was. But there are too many people in this film. They could have cut the budget in half had they not had a lot of people there. And as much as I like the OG characters there, they really weren't needed in this story. And some of the newer characters, some of the side characters, um, could have not been in there and it wouldn't have changed the film. But I will tell you this. Is it a great film? If you, In my review, I, I wish I had it, I had it somewhere on a text. Um, I said if you... If you are a Ghostbusters fan, you will enjoy this film. It's impossible to love this film more than Afterlife. But it is possible that it's, it is a good film. I enjoyed it. Um, the I will say the special effects, especially with the monster that's involved in this, the centri- one of the central bad characters in the film, is done extremely well. Very convincing. Even scary to a point. And I... Lo- absolutely love the movie poster for it. I don't know if you've seen the movie poster for that. And I like the one for Afterlife, but I really like the Frozen Empire Ghostbusters poster. It's just really well done. And so those are good things that I have to say about it. So overall, should you see it? Yeah. But if you're going in thinking it's better than Afterlife, you're going to be disappointed in that sense. But if you're a Ghostbusters fan, you probably won't care as much. Let me ask, let me ask you like this. Um, so original Ghostbusters, right? Super awesome, great film. Then it Perfect. had a sequel, which, which was two, which less. Was not. 
It was good. As good. It was okay. So, right. With Afterlife being the quote unquote first film for at least for this series of Ghostbusters. How does that compare the the new one Frozen Empire? How does that compare with Ghostbusters 2? Is it if if you believe a lot of the reviewers out there, they're going to say it's absolutely horrible, and you know they're going to run the the normal thing they do to tear a film down oh, yeah, when it's those, those those channels that hate everything. Yeah, the, 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 they, their income is based care. upon negativity. Right, M- mine isn't, and um, but for me, Ghostbusters two. Th- okay, Frozen Empire. Okay, you have the original Ghostbusters in eighty four. You have Afterlife in 2018 is that right or whenever it was right okay so essentially you have the two originals right those are those are the best at what they do ghostbusters 2 and what was that 89 i guess or something like yeah. that yeah 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 because it was right. i liked it less oh no I no liked... it was a little it was later than that i think i think it was, later it was 89 or 90 something like that came out what year? Because it had that Bobby Brown song in it. What did, on our own. Did Last Crusade come out? Was 89. it eighty nine? That was eighty nine. So oh, this might have been. It might have been ninety. That was the same year. It okay. was eighty nine or ninety. Okay, it was eighty nine then. But anyway, so original Ghostbusters still the best. Can't top it. Right. Um, and if I have to put them together, I would say Afterlife is next to that. Then I would put Frozen Empire. And then I would put Ghostbusters 2. I didn't like Ghostbusters 2. I mean, I thought it was okay. Maybe it was it, okay. It, didn't, it did not live up to the potential. Right. Of the first and, and plus they waited about four or five years to make that sequel. They, it come out like waited, two years later. It took way too long for them to. to uh, and at that point, they could have brought in Eddie Murphy, even though he was originally supposed to be Ernie Hudson's character. He was supposed to have played that. And I was thinking that coming out in theater, I reminded myself of that. Um, and, and I was like, that would have been really wild. And it would have been good for Eddie Murphy because he started to cool off a little bit after that because he was red hot during the early to mid 80s. Like, like, yeah, the early and mid 80s. Right. I mean, so, you had like uh, Golden Child and Coming to America and, of right. course, Raw, which and, really, I mean, he was already on the map, but Raw. And Delirious. Don't forget, he had Delirious. Uh, you know, his position as the, pretty much the number one comic at the time. At the time, he was he was white hot. Yeah, he there was the, he even had a music career. <laughs> you know, that's how how hot he was. And I don't want to get copyrighted. So I'm um, it was the Rick James. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> a song. Uh, party all the time. Party all the time. Party all the time. So anyway, yeah. So Ghostbusters good. Um. But what I was getting at uh, when you mentioned seeing Phantom Menace the other day, the 25th anniversary, which to me, it seems like it's longer than 25 years. But when I can have the doubt, 2024 it, from 1999 is 25 years. So we're getting the Phantom Menace with a special. You're going to be excited about this uh, exclusive preview of the Acolyte at the end of it. <laughs> so I know you're waiting on that. I'll I'll <laughs> leave during the credits. <laughs> But of course, well, it, it won't matter because where I'm located, it will not. Uh, it right. will be theaters most likely. Right. Which um, I hate, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, and um, yeah, our cinemas up here aren't as good as the ones in Savannah. I mean, that we don't have the IMAX that can really hang with the IMAX there. I mean, I'll take what I can get, but um, at least I got my Twizzlers at Regal, so I'm excited about that, and. Uh, <laughs> But um, so I'm excited to go see if it comes here, all of the films. Um, and, and I had a printout of it and I, I don't know what I did with it um, of when they're all releasing. I don't know that it said when they were all releasing, but I had a list of them and um, I will definitely go see them in a the theater. I did not get to see Return of the Jedi's 40th anniversary when it came out. Was it last year to theaters? Yeah. last um, year. It did have a really cool poster with like Luke and the, background of indoor and then you would see the um vader shuttle on the um ramp or whatever you call that in the background of indoor you know and all that and i guess you probably have vader's helmet what i really wish they would do for these anniversary releases of the films mm-hmm. 
is re-release the original theatrical cuts of these as an anniversary because that's what it's the anniversary of is the original well you know lucas has already said that all we're gonna get we'll never we're never gonna see the the un 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 special editions the pre-special editions versions ever again he doesn't want that so even though disney owns it there's no plans for that ever to make the light of day i think that's part of the agreement all they want to do is just keep changing the originals and that leads us into they don't they don't really bother too much the biggest thing that they've done to the prequels and i think this actually changed it for the better was in episode one when they released it on I want to say it was one of the DVD releases, not the first one, of course. Right. But one uh, a more recent release. It may have even been the Blu-ray release. But well, they put they put in they added more they, universal stuff to tie it all together, which was cool. But no, what they really changed in episode one, and again, I think it was for the better, was they took out the Yoda puppet and put in the CG model from episode right. two. And well. I, I, I think that really helped it. It it did. It did. And even that even part. though we we talked we've talked about this yeah. not, not on the podcast. Well, we probably did talk on a podcast at some point, I'm sure we did. But recently we talked about it. And you know, the technology wasn't there for that oh, in ninety nine. No. And by the time he Lucas was able to go back and add him, you know, otherwise we were gonna get a lightsaber battle oh. with Yoda. It's and someone at, in episode one. But he he knew he couldn't do it realistically until they advanced the technology, which is what Lucasfilm always did. Mainly George Lucas, he is is and he's always always will be force of of technology. Yeah, when he moved things together, he pushed the medium like 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 um, James Cameron does, like um, um, Nolan does. I would say what what Cameron does now is what Lucas used to do. Though, as an aside, they came out with The Abyss and a couple of his others. Uh, True Lies came out on 4K, and they did an AI restoration of it. And there are people that really aren't terribly excited about those releases. They're like, it's not the best. They thought that Cameron could have done more. You know, I'm not going to knock him for at least putting... of it. I think so. I think he he put it in AI's hands, and it, I, I really don't. Think, I don't know. I don't think improving the visual effects on a movie like The Abyss really makes that much of a difference. It's still a great film, it's, regardless. It's story. You know that yeah. one. That movie is really more story driven than anything else. True. True. And. Now, um, could they have told that story without the you know the CG effects? Yeah, they probably could have. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, again, like I said, it's with a movie like The Abyss, it's more about the story than the effects. And really, if you think about it, other than the aliens, right in The Abyss, there there was no. Everything was pretty much practical effects. It was kind of like war- they were water based, obviously. It, so yeah, it was, it was it was like the precursor to what they did in Terminator Two with yeah, the- yeah, yeah, with the T one thousand with that um, melting effect now, or whatever you call it. If he were to go back and remaster that and, and redo the the effects in that, I think I think it would be a slight improvement, but it wouldn't be a major improvement. T two still holds up because the story holds up and uh, the effects still oh, hold thing. up. The only thing about the effects that don't really hold up, and it it really kind of looked odd, even back, you know. I, think in I know the scene you're going to say. Are was you going to say in the hallway? No, no, no. I'm just saying, like oh. when when the T1000 like recoalesces into his humanoid form, and mm-hmm. he's completely silver, and then he pauses for a second, and then he turns color. Well, I think what it what it was, they were trying to show a glitch there because he kind of glitches, and that was intentional because he was. It it was intentional because the technology wasn't to the point where they could do it without doing that. 
Well, I, I know, but it, it works into the storyline of it because he was kind of like, that was actually pretty traumatic for, even though that's what that Terminator does. But I was reading something because I'm in one of the Terminator Facebook groups, Terminator 2, well, Terminator, Terminator 2, whatever, uh, Facebook groups. And, and somebody had asked that question, you know, well, how come, you know, because uh, the T-800 Terminator, you know, has the the computer components, whatever, um, chips and stuff like that. But the T-1000 doesn't have that because it's the, met, I, call, I, I call it like a metamorphic alloy. And so it's kind of like what we would call maybe like Borg nano, nano, nanobots or something to that, maybe something like that technology. From Genesis. This you know what I was the T one thousand was liquid metal. It's like yeah, it's liquid metal. But the way they were explaining Probably, it, and they said that this was in one of the, metal. this was in one of the, um, uh, books or something they had on it that I haven't read. Um, they were trying to explain. At least somebody was trying to explain on there uh, in that group that that they they don't have a long like shelf life. Whatever that is in that alloy oh, yeah. of the T two. So they can't, they can't really, they can only kind of, they can keep going back and forth, you know, and doing shapes and mimicking whatever they copy a person or whatever, but they don't have like, they can't last like a hundred, was it a hundred years that the the 800 series could last on their power cells that they have. So because, just because it's kind of like hardware versus almost like software, hardware that's almost like right. software, if that makes sense. But um, anyway, so um, I could talk all day about Terminator, but that's not why we're here. <laughs> yeah, we're here. We've, Let's course, talk about off the topic because that's what we do. We get here. off topic, but but it's always it's always very very pointed and energetic. We've got a lot of between you. We have many many uh, years of uh, knowledge um, on on a lot of topics. And um, yeah. anyway, um, dirty topic. So, X Men ninety seven. I do. I do have one pet peeve, and it's really nobody's fault. It's nothing that could have been done differently other than recasting a person. And I'm glad they didn't recast the person. So I'm getting used to this. And what that is is Rogue's voice. It. I love that they brought all of the original voice actors back that that were alive and were still able to do it. And you know, kudos to them. But the lady who does Rogue's voice, she's obviously what 27, 30 years older. Right, since, you right. know, and her voice, you can tell, has aged. And yes. she's doing that Southern Bell kind of accent that Rogue has. Sounds almost like an it sounds like an older lady trying to sound like a Southern girl. Yes. And it and it it almost sounds it kind does, of it does kind of take you out of, of it a little bit. It sounds kind of baby <laughs> doll baby doll ish or something. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm getting used to that. I'm like, if that's my only complaint, which that is my only I will, complaint, I will, then I, will I am say, fine. I will say this. It's not anywhere near as bad as Kira Sedgwick trying to do a Southern accent. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's true. It's so bad. At yeah. That. Well, the, um, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Your wife doesn't do a good Southern accent. Cause I know. Oh, Kevin dear. Watches. Damn. Now Kevin Bacon's not going to watch us anymore. <laughs> I guess he can't come on and dance footloose with me. There's that one view. <laughs> There's that one view. I know. So, um, so we're talking about X Men '97. My overall thing, without being too hokey, it's exceptional. Well, I'm doing the X <laughs> for those not watching the video. It's uh, excellent. <laughs> it really is all that. I could have not been happier. And another thing that makes me super over the moon, excited, and happy is finally, finally, finally. The last time we saw this was, oh, X-Men, the animated series in 1996. We saw Cyclops treated with the respect that he deserves, not this little punked out little guy that gets beat up in every film and, and live that, action. That, that action sequence at the beginning of oh, it, when he comes in, oh, my God, it was amazing. Yes. It and and amazing. Now, now, for me, so far of X-Men... 97 series and maybe even all of it the, the original animated series in x-men 97 when they when the sentinel tears the plane apart and uh and they just go into free fall every member of the team and scott does that cyclops he does the air he does the captain america 
no parachute thing where yeah, he just yeah. dives. I'll and see you then at the <laughs> I did not see that coming. And uh, great suspense in this show, great writing, it's everything. But when he does that and then he does the optic blast, I, I, I'm, ooh, excuse me, my, my level went out there. I don't understand how the physics of it work with an optic blast like that. You may have to explain that to me, but he lets loose the greatest like optic blast. It's that would look so great on the big screen. I'd jump out of the well, seat of the theater. Uh, you know, and his optic blast, to the ground. a lot of people, you know, who haven't read a lot of X-Men, right. You know, just coming into it, you know, they think, well, Cyclops shoots lasers. Out of his eyes. It's not, it's concussive force. That apparently now they've they've kind of retconned that it's concussive force from a an alternate dimension. Wow. So apparently now Cyclops's eyes are portals to an alternate dimension. Well, I don't know about that part, but yeah, I don't know about that either. But it's concussive force. So yeah. you know, concussive force, you know, he's shooting that blast down to the ground, so it's 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 going to slow him because it's pushing back. And his knees don't seem to mind that awesome superhero hero landing, right? Like oh, Deadpool no. says, here comes no, a they're, superhero they're, landing. They're, they're in the prime of their exactly. lives, so, so it doesn't matter. And and he's just not this. He is the team leader, the statistician, that scene where he's fighting him in the warehouse. And he's using his, his optic blast to to propel himself backwards and he spins around yeah. and then he's just hand to hand combat with people. This was the kind of respect that I've been looking for ever since the animated series, because when I started watching in the nineties, I was in, it started in what 92. So I would have been 22 and I'm about to turn 54. So, wow. Um, that's a long time ago. And uh, I remember right before Wolverine, Wolverine was becoming like the big thing, you know, this is before he was always he he was but he was, he was huge going into the 90s he was huge in the 80s bob well well he was but he wasn't to the point where we get to later on and then when hugh wolverine, jackman comes on board in 2000 when wolverine really blew up in the comics and and really in pop culture was about it was during the x-men the animated series because we had where x-men 75 it was where about magneto rips out the animanium it was about 86. He was already one of the most popular X Men by 86. But then I'm telling Frank you, Miller, the author, you know, the same guy that wrote The Dark for mm -hmm. Batman, he wrote that four issue miniseries for Wolverine, you know, and that's where we get the, you know, the, the, the Wolverine quote, you know, I'm the best there is at what I do, but what I do isn't very nice. Anytime you hear that's yeah. where that comes from yeah from that it, Frank Miller. but but for for me i was i wasn't into x-men in the 80s i was probably in the spider-man superman stuff like that i wasn't as big into the x-men in the 80s but after like during the animated series wolverine became much larger into the 90s and in the comics and every for people that weren't are are ardent for for people that weren't like everyday comic book enthusiasts which i wasn't at that time at least when it came to x-men but that made me go out you know i, I liked the wolverine character and nothing wrong with them but especially the dynamic between him and scott the kind of almost adversarial thing yes. but um which is still there logan needs to get over it but <laughs> the thing with gene and scott but it's, I, it's fine though it's fine I, i'm good with it but scott for me Cyclops was my favorite character going into X-Men, the animated series. And that's the only time I ever saw him be the leader that he's supposed to be. He is the, like Wolverine says in one of the newer episodes, he goes, this whole Boy Scout thing of yours, which Boy Scout is, you know, he did call him that, but that's also a, an homage in a way to Superman, who's the, you know, the ultimate Boy Scout. But, but in, in the X-Men lore, you know, it was good to, see that boy scout that leader that tactician and the way he like to me my x-men when he yeah. you know at the end of that jump out the or falling out the plane and then he's like great work at the team that the x-plane just got tore to smithereens midair by a sentinel 
and <laughs> and then they all land and and like rogue the funny part is oh it's time to play catch the x-men <laughs> yeah and you know oh, we're g- <clears throat> oh sorry let's talk about storm for a minute. yes i want to talk oh, about oh my gosh people know the comics of what happens and oh, by the way we're if you for some reason haven't seen the first two episodes, you're gonna see them. We're gonna go straight out spoilers here. So yes, spoiler yes. alert. If you haven't seen them, uh come back later and watch or whatever. All two of you. No. Um with Storm. Oh my god, that like it breaks. First of all, heart. I'm not a fan of how they started her animation model. As far as you know, having the mohawk. Because if you if me as you well, follow, if you follow her story in the comic book, there isn't that is a Days of Future story. Past? No, 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 no. Because we had that in X Men the Animated Series. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was actually in season one. Was that season one? And that's yeah. where they introduced Bishop. Right. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, I, got, I have something to say about Bishop too, but we'll get to that later. But I'm not. If you follow. The, her story in the comic. There is a storyline where she does lose her powers. And at that point, that's where she takes on this, you know, punk, badass kind of uh, attitude where she right, right. shaves all her hair off except for this big ass mohawk and starts wearing all this leather and belts and. And you know that that's around the same time when she beats the crap out of Callisto for uh, leadership of the Morlocks, and she's a leader. She has no powers, but she's still the leader of the X Men. Right, right, right. And I really wish that they would have started her out, you know, visually wearing, you know, like her white suit with the yellow stripe, like you know, and like, then. But After had, her losing her powers, trans, transferring to that. And then, you know, transitioning into the Mohawk. Maybe. Bad girl kind of look, you know, after she loses her power. And I, I really think that would have been much more impactful, mm-hmm. even if people aren't realizing it. But they see, you know, oh, she's, you know, beautiful just like she was in the original animated series and then now she's lost her powers she's lost her way she's lost her identity she's trying to find herself and i think it would have played Hulk, yeah lot, yeah i think it would have played a lot better with the story if they, if they would have done that visually but and the, these are small small critiques we still very, yes love yes, it yeah it's not it's not uh and, it's and, not, and, and oh, i don't yeah. She has a mohawk to begin with. I hate Storm now, and blah, I'm done. Right. With it's, it. it's it's no. it's not that. Yeah. So let's give. Let's. I want to go back to this discussion about Storm because it's very vital and important to the series. But what are your your overall impressions for seeing both episodes so far of X Men '97? I I really enjoyed it. It really surprised me after you know this big media blow up that we had just yeah like a week before the show premieres with the showrunner getting fired and you know the thing about crazy morph and being non-binary that that really didn't bother me so much as me as well you know in the blurb that they gave for morph about his unique relationship Relationship. wolverine you know that you know me the, well, this is what concerns me too. I found myself at times because I've probably watched both episodes maybe five to six times at the recording of this, at least, you know, that I can remember counting. And one of those watchings, I was looking at Morph a little close because you look at different characters, you look at different things, the more you see something. And and there's parts where he goes, Morph automatically goes for wolverine when he turns into angel when they're falling out the plane right right. and then you see him later with wolverine and i'm like is there body language going on there that am i seeing something that isn't there or an anticipation that there might be something between him i don't think so because if you go back i I have gone back and i've started rewatching the 
animated series. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with Morph, at least I've, I've made it to like uh, episode one of uh, um, Days of Future Past. And so that's a, that's probably about halfway through, maybe a little more than halfway through season one. So we we know Morph doesn't come back until you know a couple of seasons later. Oh, so, so you made it to you said the first part of Days of Future Past. Yes. Yes. Okay. And which is uh, also excellent. <laughs> yes. Um. But you know the dynamic between Wolverine and Morph in like that first episode you know it kind of plays to what they're doing to what they showed in you know the the first couple of episodes of x97 and yeah. it, it, they're buddies they're good friends right right there's there's nothing romantic or romantic yeah going on there and and I will put this as out the there. Progresses, and I hope I'm wrong. As the series progresses, yeah, that yeah. may change, and I hope that's not the case because I really it, it's, it's gonna hurt. It's character assassination of Wolverine's character because there's no precedence for it. Brand more if it plays out like there's there's something romantic going right. on later on in the. There's, there's nothing wrong with that buddy camaraderie and no, no, you know, I mean, they're, they're and we're not we're not buddies. being phobic saying this in they're, any they're, way. They're drinking buddies. It's right. just Wolverine is not that type of character. He's never right. been that type of character. Never, never in any of the comics or in what how many years? 75 years of and you know, I don't have problem with homosexual characters or non-binary characters. Me either. It's not a thing of it's, you know, we put it in there because of, you know, this agenda or this message. You know, that's a whole different thing. But if it's just a fact of the character just happens to be homosexual or it's a shape or that's non-binary, that I could care less. Right. It doesn't matter to me. And I think that kind of enrages a lot of people. Right. When, when you say it doesn't I don't, matter. I'm I don't, all for representation. I'm, you know... If we talk about strong female characters, you won't find any stronger characters in comics than you'll find in Storm, Jean Grey. They're they're at Rogue. They're out front leading Rogue, teams. Psylocke. Psylocke. Um, oh my gosh, we could go on. You know, any any of the the ex ladies, just about. Yeah, maybe yeah. not Dazzler so much. But here here's here's I think a point that I wanted to touch on, and of all the comics and all the superhero properties, Marvel, DC, X-Men lends itself to bigotry. Um, honestly, did you catch the, uh, some people are trying to draw comparisons to January 6th, the insurrection there, to uh, the, the trial of Magneto. I don't, and I don't, I don't. Yeah. I can see comparisons, but that would be there anyway because of the story of the trial of Magneto. But, it's but but what I'm saying, if you ever had a universe that deals with with uh, people not being treated properly for their race, their color, their sex, whatever, it's the X-Men universe. And this would be the universe of all the places that Disney's gone woke and, and, and other um, comics and uh, superhero iterations. This is the one universe where that would totally work. And if you had one character... And if you had one character on the X-Men team to be non-binary, Morph is a perfect choice. And and here's why. Because Morph, you know, he, he can be male, female, it can be whatever he needs to be or wants to be in what, whatever situation. And I could totally see you. it would work perfectly if he is non-binary. And, you know, if he chooses to be female or male or whatever, in of any character it works for the character of morph it's in the name morph he morphs again, into something again, different it's not an issue unless it's made an issue right and that's not that goes both ways okay and and, and I, I don't i don't want to say this or the you know the company can make an issue of it by right. trying to you know push whatever 
your your identity isn't necessarily your sexual preference. Um, a straight a straight person, and I'm not saying this to to upset anybody. That's not my intention. That's not where my heart is. Um, but a straight person wouldn't say, "Oh, well, I'm I'm going to do something that straight people do, or whatever. I'm going to do such and such, or or here's my sex life." That's not part of your character, you know. That you would say that Han Solo doesn't have to say, oh, "I'm heterosexual. I'm going to <laughs> screw Princess Leia." You just kind of know it's going to happen, you know, or whatever, you know, consenting adults. So Han Solo, it doesn't need to, that doesn't need to be part of a story. It, it it doesn't add anything to the story. If anything, it detracts and it does push some people away. And and it and you know and that's that's fine. That's their preference, right? But you know, it's totally. different than. It's serving the story, right? Than checking off a box, and I know we've talked about you know yeah. checking off a box, right? Plenty, right. Plenty, not necessarily on a a live stream. Do do we camera. need more females in front of and behind the camera? Yes. Do we need yes, more people of color running the studios right. and and females? But run, yes, of course. Let's not do it. Let's get talented people who are going to churn out quality entertainment that people are going to enjoy. And of course, Correct. you know, you can't please all the people all the time. You're no. never going to make a show that and everybody loves. It's especially important when you're dealing with legacy characters, 50 to what, 75 years of X-Men, you know, Wolverine's yes. yes. just because he's been written that way all that time. Doesn't mean they can't change it. But you don't fundamentally change a character. This is the whole idea with the Luke Skywalker thing. You know, they turn him into what we would call what Mark Hamill said, Jake Skywalker. Yeah, Jake Skywalker. Because Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi would have never given up. He would have never let the entire, he didn't fight that hard to get there to let the whole universe fall apart. He never would have given in to this supposed impulse he had to kill his nephew because he, especially he family some darkness in him well my god luke look in the mirror and it just goes back to show people that are directing and and writing stories and and we're not as fans we're not going to watch your films and we're not your tv series or whatever if you don't honor the characters the true heart of who the characters are now if 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 it's written and they change a character in the comics, or even if you do it in a film, if that's integral to the story that you change their preference, or they have an, an awakening and they decide that there's something different, it has to make sense for right. the character. Like, let's talk about the comics, for example. Right. In the comic books, um, Kurt Wagner, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, yes. You know, in after post two thousand, sometime I a don't Catholic remember. spiritual. He, he becomes a priest, a Catholic priest. Yes, he's still an X Man. X Man. He does. He goes on missions. He lives at the mansion. You know, he, he hangs out with mutants, but on Sundays he goes out to the the local. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say parish. You, yeah. you can give me the right word. Is it parish? Parish. Parish. Yeah. And you know, you know, he he preaches a sermon. Yeah. And and and, and does he does he know, kill people? Violence. Yes. Even though you he's know. committing violence as an X Man, mm -hmm. he's doing it in order to help safeguard lives. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And so. But you know, he he was he had been building up to that for a while. Right. So and it, it was it made sense for the character. Now it turned out him getting chosen to become a priest and stuff was part of some anti mutant plot. And anyway, I'm not gonna get into all that because I don't remember all that. That was right. really during not and, the greatest run right. in the comics, but it at the time it made sense for the character. Right. Because he was very religious. And you know, that's kind of how in X2, X Men United, that's kind of how they portrayed. Right. He I had his rosary beads. He was praying. Religious character. 
he he had that wonderful interaction with on the plane on the X plane with um with Storm. Storm. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's really really good moments and moments of faith and you need faith and um you know but now if we have let's say the the morph character if it becomes episodes where it's just his I'm now non-binary to him talking about being non-binary and making a big deal about it. Yeah, that's not going to work. I mean, and if it's one episode, if he has that, but if that becomes his thing, like we're going in the field more, well, I'm non-binary now. And, um, you know, and he starts talking about his sexual life, then we're like, okay, that really has no place with the yep. mission. It, it doesn't, it, it has no place in the show. It, it, unless it's just it's bad writing. Story, and right. I can't see where his gender orientation is going to to matter in a mission affect the story one way or the other right i mean and, you know a lot of people are talking about and this is this is one thing that kind of bugs me about it and mm -hmm. and and i'm not saying people aren't born believing they're the wrong gender i mean that happens there's there's people who are born with both sets of sexual organs and the parents have to make a, a decision on on you know for health reasons mostly you know one one sex or the other one gender or the other and you know a lot of times it's not correct and so that person is you know quote unquote and and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to make this sound like it's condescending or talking down to people or anything like that. But with mutants in the Marvel universe, you are born human with the X gene, right? The X gene does not activate until right, right around puberty. So. Right, right. Usually it's something that's very strenuous, like we say Magneto when he was in the concentration camp. All right. So it happened early. Right. For it happened earlier for him. And right. um, as, a, as a general rule, puberty is about the time the X gene right. decides to manifest in that way. Yeah, manifest itself. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just, you know, making a, a, an assumption here for more. So Morph was born human. He was born either one gender or the other, most likely. Right. So when his power manifested, did that cause him confusion? And I can I can understand how it know. but we don't know. But it's not like he was born with shape changing powers to say he was born non-binary or whatever unless so unless they go and retcon that but then that would go in the face of history of morph because he's not right. other than in the age of apocalypse he's not a comic book character he was created right. specifically for the animated series the first episode to get killed that right. was well, his, it was supposed to be i think warpath that was died in that but they didn't want to an um um native american they didn't want to not Warpath. No, his was, brother or something, or yeah, his his older brother, Warpath's oh, older. Because Warpath okay. is is uh is in one of them. The one from X Force. Yes, you're right. You're right. It's an X Force. Thunderbird is who you're you're thinking of. Thunderbird. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And um, you know, that's fine, you know, either way, how how they did the story and, and having more now he was also known as Changeling. I don't know if that was in the comics later or Morph was. I don't I'm remember think. again, other than in the age of apocalypse, I don't remember. I think I think I've read that again. so there was or there was a character similar to him. I thought it was him, but I could be wrong. Well, you um, know Morph looks in X Men ninety seven now. That's how yeah. the Age of Apocalypse morph looked, except he was wearing you know true, like true. Evil true. Yeah, but like the white face, kind of face. That's the way he looked. Right. And um yeah, so I mean, 
it could be interesting to find out why he's not binary I mean if they even if they did an episode but only if it drives the, the, the if overall. it drives the overall story and you know what's sinister here's a thought that I uh, an interesting way because you know sinister is a mr sinister is a big part of it he may well, not have been born he may have been created by that's sinister true. That's true. and sinister may have been trying to mix a male and female of scott and jeans thing who knows yeah. i don't know. Yeah, who knows or 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 messing around with other or mutants and powers and stuff and remember i don't know if you ever read x men the could end could be a possibility but um, x men the end i'm um, not sure it's it's I guess you could say it's kind of an alternate future where it's pretty much the last mission of the X Men. They did a whole series of the end. It uh, sounds familiar, but I, I don't think I read it. Or Avengers and you know, it was a whole a whole thing. It was supposed to be like at the end of the, the, the superhero age or whatever you want to call it. And it turns out that Gambit was created. I didn't remember that. The red eyes. The red, explains it. red eyes come from because he was created by Sinister using mixing the his own genetics, Mr. Sinister's uh S Mr. Essex. I forget what his first name was. Nathaniel Essex. Nathaniel. Yeah. So he, he took his own DNA, he mixed it with the Summer's DNA. And that's where Gambit came from, according to that book, which I, I, I think, you know, I think that was probably something that they were planning to reveal sooner because that book was written by Chris Claremont. Right. Who we all know is pretty much the writer of every X-Men story that is this good I love <laughs> because he wrote the books for so, so long. Right. But I, I, I don't think that got to play out for him because you know in the 90s when when the artist spotlight happened you know if that's what you want to call it but when when the artists exploded in, at the time and you know we got the new x-men book and all that you know the last of the regular series that he wrote were x-men one two and three that that story where they uh, go to asteroid M and mm -hmm. try to stop Magneto and cause it to right. fall back to Earth, and everybody thinks Magneto's dead for about a year. And does that lead into? Is that part of uh, X seventy five X Men seventy five when he takes uh, Wolverine's adamantium out? Magneto dies. Are you talking or about that... the Fatal Attraction storyline? Was that that was Fatal Attraction? Yeah, it kind of it, that kind of leads into it because. You know, everybody thinks Magneto's dead because they, you know, and then he's jo he becomes Magneto. Joseph, I think. The that's character. after that's after the all the onslaught that's, stuff. And oh, okay, that is yeah, which I love the onslaught. See, for me, that was the whole bread and butter was X Men the animated series, and then straight to the comics, and then through the nineties with a lot of that through Schism, which was good. And what was the one that with the Asgardians where, um, um. Are you talking about where Norman Osborn took over Shield and turned it into Hammer, and then Asgard came back from Ragnarok, but it was Cause, cause you, Oregon or something? I think so, and because then you had like versions of Asgardian, like the Hulk had our Guardian oh, no, no, armor. No, you're talking about you're talking about Fear itself. Fear itself. That was a good run. I enjoyed that as well. The ancient uh, the ancient gods were coming back or something. I still have, you know, like all of those comics. So all the Age of Apocalypse stuff. X Man was one of my favorite characters out of Age of Apocalypse. Um, the I'll whole see, when I was originally reading comics about the time Age of Apocalypse came out was about the time I was kind of getting out of it a bit. So I, I, yeah. I, I never originally I've read some of the stuff for Age of Apocalypse since then. But I did not read it originally. I think I was there through all of that, all the way through Onslaught. Onslaught was probably my. I love the Age of Apocalypse and the Alpha and Omega that booked into 
a lot of what ticked me off with it is like just the whole quality of the comics at that point was going downhill. I wasn't at that point. All the all the top tier artists were, you know, going over to Image and starting their own studios or joining up like Jim Lee or um yeah, yeah. but it, it was a golden age as well for a lot of, you had the lenticular covers and the X Men you know the full there, ones now, and, like that first from like ninety one to I want to say that's ninety one it may have been a little earlier it may have been early as ninety we're starting with um the death of Superman. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm thinking. Really which is change the landscape of comics. I've, I've got them all back here on my bookcase yeah. here. You you all of a sudden had all these people who wanted to be comic book speculators and buying them because oh they're going to be worth something. Not realizing that they printed a gazillion bajillion copies of these top tier books, like. Superman 75 and Action Comics 500 and releasing, you know, 14 different covers for everything and 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 then, you know, that also gets into the embossed covers and the there you go. The Death of Superman this the embossed is covers and the foil covers and the When did you say that Death of Superman was? I want to say it was like 90, 91 somewhere. 90, 92. 92 i was close yeah and uh because you know you had you had that and that really that this is this was the beginning of the end this is the mount olympus of comics at that that, time that event really inflated dc's super flagging sales i mean they were just their sales were tanking at that point until they put out Superman number 75 or the stuff leading up to, to it because, you know, they were all in the press. We're going to kill Superman. We're going to kill Superman. Superman's going to die and just kind of building it up. And, and I think it was a good event and it was a good event for comics as a whole, because it really re-energized the the whole comic industry. But ever, like you said, and I was going to get to that earlier. Without, without that, there would have right. been no no artists right. blow up. There wouldn't have been an image comics. Exactly. You know. And, and, and good. On the other hand, it wouldn't give us event comics like we have today, where you have to buy fifty issues in a month in order to you know keep up with the entire storyline well i i felt i fell in that hole with flashpoint which was awesome i bought every single comic that was i won't say I bought everyone, but I, I, I pretty much had every at least at least one of every, every character that was involved in all that and that was one of then, the greatest runs but two you know i, yeah. I won't like everybody else i was really interested to see what they were gonna do. you and i were against it at the beginning and, and then it worked for about a year we're not like batman yeah it, it worked for about a year. Thing yeah. For Batman. You, I remember it worked about a year for you and I because we were back on. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, and then on they, um, the Digital Man Brandon Cave, Walker. we were talking at podcast, we were talking about it. But I mean, it was an exciting thing. It, it, it pissed me off, though. Yeah. Of the fact that they couldn't wait to run the storyline before Action Comics reached is thousandth episode uh, issue not episode but issue and because you know even though action comics a thousand has come out now it it's it's not it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything because it wasn't a continuous run run of that numbering right i had i was excuse me i was collecting i don't know which one of his action comics or whatever when we had the red and the blue Superman through that, and oh, we got to like three hundred yeah. or something like that, and then it switched over or something, or they restarted it, or I can't remember, but I, I don't um, remember. I know, I, I just remember like one had electricity powers, and I don't. Remember that was red and blue, yeah. 
Superman. And then that was interesting, but yeah, it wasn't really Superman. And nobody liked and it. anyway, the um like you said, and I was gonna say earlier, we got to a white hot point where everybody was buying comics. The death of Superman really energized it all comics. The comics industry. And and then and, also, and then we get we get the crossovers, but then just like Hollywood, something's hot. Let's put out so many of it that we run everything into the ground, and they the oversaturated ground. the market. Everything plummeted. Comic box stores started all going the, out. All the, and then, all the big issues were right. you know, overprinted in the tens of thousands. Exactly, and then eventually that led to comic book stores. You know, they had all this product wouldn't sell and then comic book stores started going out and then we get the rise of the digital comics which really were a death blow to the comic book it, stores it really killed the most of the physical stores for comics now some of the bigger places like uh um, survived i, I want to say mile high comics but i don't think they're around anymore but um there's that place in Manhattan that's got several stores and they have an online presence as well. And I just cannot think of the name of it. Well, most of that's because I hadn't really, you know. Right. Dealt with that. In, into in that. Stuff. You know, well, I, I did digital comics for, for a while. I might have did that a couple of years or so. And then then I just kind of got out of comics. Comics just became and, kind of And it's boring. not the same, but if you're just – it's almost reading digital comics is almost shit. I forgot what comparison I was going to make now. <laughs> it's like going to a library. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't remember what I was trying to say now. Um, well, maybe that, it was something like albums. I attribute it to albums. You know, I remember having albums and I don't have my albums anymore. And I was like, well, albums are going away. I get CDs and all that good stuff. And from there we go to, um, streaming and all this, whatever we're doing now, yeah, you know, streaming and everything else. Um, uh, like MP3 downloads, and you were doing streaming and all that stuff. But it's, I think it's kind of like that. There's something that's missed about having the comic book and seeing the panels and the artwork and the the coloring, and it's like having an album, a vinyl album, and reading the liner notes or learning the lyrics. You know, it's not the same as in the digital format. You know. It's it's not the same. Here, I, okay, I remember what comparison I was going to make now. Mm -hmm. It's just like reading a digital comic is just like buying the trade paperback. You do it. You're not doing it because you're a collector of the issues. You're doing it for the story. You're doing it because you want to read the story. And Interesting. That that's that's really what I compare it to. It's. It, Yes, there is a bit of a, a collecting component to digital comics, but not like it is for physical comics. And, you know, when you buy a trade paperback where it just puts this, you know, it's it's got the collection of that one storyline in there, you're just buying it because you want to read the story. You're not buying it because it's collectible because trade paperback rarely right. increase in price. Like I'm looking at, um, and I got this later. Um, I have the four books, or excuse me, yeah, four books of Age of Apocalypse. I have some of the original comics. With, who knows, might be worth something. I don't know. But I ended up going back and getting the Marvel. You almost call them omnibuses, but they're not that thick. Omnibus. But you know, the, I know what you're talking about. They're like the collecting there are comics. A, a, uh, omnibuses, and there's about six of them. Yeah, and so I have that, and then like uh, the onslaught one I have, and and so that you know the Superman Doomsday, which is like this thick, that was collecting all the comics. So it was nice to own the one thing instead of having all the other stuff. It felt yeah, like downsizing. Yeah, and, and like I said, if you're if you're more interested in the story and reading the story than being a collector of comic books then you know that's that's kind of to me what digital comics are for they're, now, they're like you trade. can do much more in the digital yeah. space to animate those comics you know with yeah, the technology we have now but it, yeah it's it's almost a different thing you're right because it's not it's not quite the same as reading it and like x 
I guess it's X Men seven. Maybe it's not seventy five. That 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 iconic cover that folded out that has Magneto here and his like magnetic bubble, and you know you have all well, X Men kind of lined up fighting him. Which one you, is that? Go back when you go back to X Men. That was X Men number one. Okay. And you got to remember there were five variants of that variants of X Men number one. True. You had the first four variants, which were just sections of, of that, that, that same picture, picture yeah that you could line up together right to see the whole thing and then there was the fifth one that was like you were talking about the gatefold cover yeah and you know back in the day and i'm sure you did the same thing back in the day uh i bought every single damn cover there was i did yeah. i did i probably still have them <laughs> that I do. I do. They're in a long box somewhere. Um, yeah. Looking back on it now, the only one which was the hardest one to get was that fifth, the gatefold cover. Uh, that would have been the only one that I purchased looking right. back on it now. But it caught up in the craze of it. That, oh, yeah, X Men number one. It's gonna be worth some money because it's X Men number one. And right, I well, didn't they printed a hundred billion copies of it. Exactly, but but the thing is, I mean, I never expected to get rich or anything from any oh, of that. No, no, and no. it wasn't. I mean, you know, you, you know, didn't either. Be, but if but, but if you're a true comic book geek or whatever, I don't like the word nerd, so I'll say geek. Um, you would buy one, and you know, nice, and you. you Nice and wrapped up, and then you'd have one that you'd actually read. So one to collect. No, I, I was. One to read. I tried not to do that. Now there were times when I did buy double because we'll talk about. I want to say it was Action Comics five hundred, where uh, Jonathan Kent has a heart attack. This is just right after Superman seventy five. Okay. I want to say, or maybe it was a couple of months afterward mm -hmm. Superman 75 but i think it was i think it was like the next month uh action comics 500 and jonathan has a heart attack and he's up in heaven he sees clark or he thinks he sees clark but anyway that issue came like superman 75 i don't know if you remember you could get the newsstand edition or there was a special polybagged edition that was, mm -hmm. and, and you couldn't see inside the polybag. It was a black solid, like a like a black trash bag, almost. It was that dark. I, don't know if I remember that one. And hmm. it had it had the only thing it had on it was the bloody S logo. <gasps> okay, now that you, yes, I do remember that. Bag. But you could get the newsstand edition that didn't come in that, that you could, you know, right. it was open, you could read or whatever. That was considerably less. But yes, it was considerably li less. Less than the But break. the polybagged edition came with several things, you know, other than the book in the bag. It had like a black armband with the, the bloody S logo on it. Maybe, maybe it was just a, a red S on the, um, on the black band. I can't remember. I don't think I over opened mine up. It's mm -hmm. it's sitting still polybagged inside <laughs> a comic bag with board and what. Um, you know, I mean, it was just th that kind of thing. It, it did get you to buy more than one copy of a book because you wanted you wanted to keep that one sealed because you thought. Well, I keep this one sealed. It's never been read. It'll be worth more money. Right. Except they've printed a bazillion, gajillion copies of it. <laughs> so it will never be worth anything. Right. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it was a great time in comics, even to collect them, even if you did buy more than one copy of some. It was a great time. The stories were great. Good. I won't necessarily say all the stories were great, but the stories were good, at least for comics that had actual writers to them. When you get to stuff like when Image first started and the individual studios, um, you know, not it was more about the artwork 
and keeping, you know, keeping the rights to what you created. Oh, it was okay. much more about that during that time than it was at least over at, at image, uh, than actually making a good book, except for, I will say, you know, I like spawn pretty well. I thought a lot of that was very well thought out. Uh, Todd McFarlane always had his stuff out on time. Yeah. Always. If there was an issue of Spawn coming, you could know that it would be every month that book would be coming out on time. The other guys, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, not as much, especially like Jim Lee was notoriously his, his four issue run of uh, Wildcats which always, you know, to me, there always be like an X-Men knockoff. Huh. Uh, you know, I mean, my God, it took a year to get like four issues out. Now, I might be exaggerating that a little bit, but it, it just seemed like it, it felt like forever that. between issues. And when you got the new issue, you had to go back and read the old issues because it had been so long since it came out. I don't think people would have that kind of patience these days to 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 wait <laughs> that long for a story, you know. They didn't have that. They didn't have the patience to wait for. Like I, I, I was always thankful. I said whatever stars had to line up for the pandemic to hit in 2020 and not 2019. Can you imagine what would have happened? And we I've said this before. If between oh, yes. Infinity yeah. War and Endgame, we oh. had to wait till 2022 or something or 23 or even this year can you like, imagine Thanos at the end of the, at the end of any war thanos really did snap and kill half the population <laughs> oh my god that would have been too too real right but thank god that uh, they wrapped up in game yeah, in 2024 i mean, god, I mean the in 19 pandemic riding in the street yeah they're like y'all worried about that we're worried about what's going to happen with thanos <laughs> yeah <laughs> Screw this pandemic. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How do we but anyway, all that? back to, to X Men 97. I know we kind of got way, way, well, way it's way it's all related. Off. You have some action figures. I do. You have I something do you have can show off. off. And are, are, are they, they, well, they actually neither one of them have really made an appearance in the in show. Yet. Videos. And here's Nightcrawler. And I'm not a big fan of this. Uh it's an interesting look with the hair. That's what so, my hair looks like when I get out of the shower. Actually, what I plan to do, because this one this one has the new pinless um, elbows and knees, and they're a bit stronger than the pinned versions of it. Okay. And hmm. he does have some butterfly articulation in the shoulders. I know you can't really see it. Yeah, just well. move a little, because your camera's a, just a um, little slow. Move a little slower when you're showing something off, yeah, yeah. Um, so we can see it. You know, he's got new sculpted arms here, like oh cool. Excuse me, the glove part on the previous that. figure was just kind of painted on there. Mm -hmm. But this one is it's actually sculpted in. That's cool. And the same thing goes for the boot part. Now it doesn't have the, the cuts here like they might normally have where you can twist it uh at the at the top of the boot. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't mind that. It's okay. But what I'm gonna try to do with this one is see if I can uh pop the head of the off. previous figure onto this one. I see the hair doesn't it the from this angle it looks okay. It's just this big yeah. swoop. It looks like a Tim Drake kind of Batman look. Kinda. I mean Robin but, look. And so the other thing about it, you know, there's this is this is all the that you can do with the tail is at the base of it it just oh it just spins around, around. yeah okay. I would have kind of liked it if they'd have done like something bendy with it that would have been well, cool. you can uh, yeah articulate but, it you know, that that can cause other issues later down the road I suppose and then the um, other which kinda made an appearance at the end of episode two is Madeline, Madeline Pryor. Pryor the Goblin Queen. The Goblin. And that's the new X Men 97 figure, correct? X 97 one, yes. Wow. And you can kind of tell from like the the hair, it doesn't, you know, it might not be as 
detailed as a regular now Marvel Legends. Her or complexion is it on. your light on your camera, or does she look a little pa pasty white like a she vampire is to me? White. She is quite pasty. And if you look at the figure from where I'm looking from my view, it almost it almost looks like a Batwoman thing. It almost looks like that part that's her skin looks like the bat symbol, doesn't it? You look at the the cape, and the cape here, even kind of like that and mm -hmm. and yeah the the chest that's showing here kind of gives that bat woman almost in, in x-men 97 um the name of this episode as well uh mutant liberation begins the very last scene is madeline Pryor showing up at the up. door of the x-men and the look on gene's face somebody has to make a meme of that and Scott's like, what, what? And she's like, oh, <gasps> she looks like she's yeah. having a spasm. She goes, wait a minute, that looks like me. Who the heck and, is you me? know, at first I was thinking, well, crap, which one of them is real? But then I was thinking, no. well, Jean was using her powers and Madeline never had any powers. So uh, Madeline so had the one that showed up. At this the could be considered spoilers to some, but um, is that actually... So I'll say spoilers in case this spoils something. Um, my question is that the cable is, was the baby that was delivered, right? Nathan. Yes. Well, Nathaniel, okay. Charles, Summers. in in the comics, Nathan was Nathan Summers was the child of Scott and Madeline. I thought so. Not Scott and Jean. So okay. Nathan was Scott's biological child, but not Jean. But oh my gosh! Like kind of adopting him. What if? But in the all along, it's been Jean on the X Men ninety seven back to the animated series since she came back from Phoenix or whatever. What if that's been at some point? Well, I you know I said I thought that originally that maybe yeah the Jean's at the door Jean. and then Madeline's been but with Madeline, Scott the whole time. Madeline didn't have any powers until the inferno crossover where she was granted powers by demons from limbo right and when she became the the goblin queen but the whole thing about madeline it was in the comics everybody thought gene was dead at right. the end of, of you know the the phoenix Oh, Phoenix, the Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, all that. You know, they thought she was dead and 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 all that. When in in reality it was the Phoenix itself who died in on the blue area of the moon. Mm -hmm. And Phoenix had taken Gene's place when they were I can't remember exactly what it was. They were in space, I think, to destroy a sentinel base in space. Well, they and were on the remember in the X-Men 90s. Lake, and and that's when the Phoenix Force put Gene in sus like a suspended animation cocoon. Well, and, on X-Men 97, they mentioned that when she was talking to Aurora, uh Gene was talking to the storm. She said, "Oh, I haven't worn this outfit since the blue blue side of the moon, or whatever." She said, and I wonder if that is a shout out. Maybe that, maybe that's Madeline, but she's thinking she's well, Jean. I will, I will have to wait and see. You know, once I get to that point in in the original show, mm -hmm. to see how that, because I don't remember how it played out on the animated. I, I'm gonna have to go back on Disney Plus and watch it and find out. That's we're getting getting off the topic there, Madeline Pryor. So sorry, sorry. Scott meets a woman named Madeline Pryor. She he retires from the X Men, right? Right. When Storm took over leadership and lost her powers and all that whole thing was going on, uh, you know, she had challenged Scott for leadership of the X Men. She won. So he decided to go to Alaska and be a pilot. Right. Well, he met another pilot there named Madeline Pryor, and she looked strikingly almost exactly like Jean Grey. And that's because she was a clone created by Mr. Sinister. Right. To 
you know, ensnare Scott because he wanted that DNA. He wanted that DNA and the, and the he child. wanted he wanted the combination of the Summers and Gray mutant DNA. 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 He wanted that child, which you know ends up being Cable. And you know, so when where, Jean, where does Strife come into the thing? I know it's much later. He's, a cl he's another clone by Apocalypse. Did Apocalypse? Yes, by Apocalypse. Okay, but but of the adult Cable. Right. Right. Okay. No, I don't know if it was the was adult. It? I think it may have been a clone that was made when they were younger. Okay. Like not a baby, but but it was hidden away, kind of same thing. Four years old, maybe something like that. Right. But it was a clone that I, I maybe even Sinister made it for Apocalypse. I don't. I don't now. That's now I remember the Oscan Oscani tribe that Cable was sent to the future. Oscani yeah. tribe, because yeah. because that's when I thought he was when 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 Cable's a baby, he gets. Apocalypse infects him, and then they have to send him in he the future to that. When he was a baby, the reason they had to send him to the future because of the techno organic the virus. Techno organic virus. Apocalypse had him infected with it, but Strife was a clone without the techno organic virus because Apocalypse right. wanted him to be at his full right. Potential telepathy. He would never reach his full of potential because he was constantly using his powers to fight Keep off the virus at bay. Organic virus from spreading right. any further than than what it had, like his arm and his eye, right, and stuff. But Madeline, then when Jean Grey came back from the dead, the Fantastic Four were in that lake or whatever. And they found this cocoon, and Gene comes out of it, and oh, we thought you were dead. So they called. I want to say it was Warren Worthington, the third mm -hmm. angel, right? And so, and you, Angel always had a thing for Gene. For Gene, okay. And so he eventually, she was worried about Scott. So he wasn't he wasn't planning on calling Scott. He wanted to keep Gene all to himself. So eventually <laughs> they ended up oopsies. <laughs> yeah. They ended up contacting Scott, letting him know. So he dropped everything, including his marriage to Madeline, which they had gotten right and had baby Nathan. He dropped everything to run back to New York, and that's where they formed the original X Factor. Which was supposed to be, there was, there was X Factor and there were the X Terminators and they were both of them. The X Terminators was their public face and they were quote unquote mutant hunters. Wow! They wanted people to turn mutants into them and then they would go as the X Terminators, get them and take them back to the X Factor and train them. Not, you know, they weren't hunting them to kill them. Right. But that's what the public thought that they were, you know, they were terminating mutants. That's what the public thought. Right. But that was that was all a thing set up by Cameron Hodge, who was oh, yeah. Warren's lawyer, who ended up being a bad guy. And, you know, he was one of the main villains during that whole Genosha extinction agenda storyline. But that's that's another thing. But anyway, so he left Madeline, Madeline, I don't remember how she ends up joining up with the X Men. Hmm. And even though she had no power, she was just kind of hanging out with the X Men because she had nowhere else to go. Okay. And that was, I want to say it was right before the fall of the mutants which was the storyline where after at the end of fall of the mutants, the public pretty much everybody thought the X-Men were dead and they went to that base in the outback. But anyway, that's all. That's a, again, that's a whole nother thing. But during, it, it gets during very that, convoluted. During that time, there was a romance or, or at least uh 
because Alex Summer was on that X Men team, Havoc, Scott's brother. Right. Well, he had a thing for Madeline. What was Polaris? Was she in this, him? This I was, think. No, I don't know. She had Lorna Dane. She hadn't been in the thing for a while. Okay, so she wasn't they in the picture. Broke, they had broken up. Okay. And uh, she was not on that X Men team. Okay. This was this was the era when it was Storm and Wolverine and Havoc and Dazzler and Rogue and Colossus. Okay. And I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. But this was this was like that that late mid eighties, like maybe eighty seven, eighty eight. Okay. That team. Right. And uh, Psylocke, okay. that's the one I was forgetting. Psylocke. Psylocke. But not when she was in was she? what you might think of now. This is when she was in the body where she's Captain Britain's sister, Betsy. Betsy Braddock, yeah. Okay. Her original. I, I remember. Body. And she wasn't with Warren yet. No, 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 no. That wasn't until. That was much you know, later. After when okay. X Factor and X Men joined back together. Okay. Um, but anyway, and it was during that time that uh, Madeline, you know, she was uh, rightly so feeling pretty abandoned and let down, and right, and she pretty much hated Scott's guts. And that was about the time that well, he he left her, her with her with he left with her with a baby <laughs> just to go get his undead wife. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, well, no, it wasn't even. It wasn't. She was. He wasn't. They weren't even married. That's true. Before then, you know, they didn't get married until you know, God. Right. Oh, you're right. Yeah, three ninety four, maybe. I I think I have that issue. I was like, I made a big deal of it, and I showed it to one of my friends at the time. I was like, this is a great story. And he was a comic book collector, and so he's like, he did not care. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you're not geeky <laughs> but, like that. You know, the, the whole Inferno thing happened, and I don't know if you you probably weren't reading um, around that time, but it, it's like... Um, I'm trying to look to see if I have that comic. <laughs> Demons of Limbo, which if you... I don't want to get off on another comic book tangent here, but I'm going to have to. Uh, Colossus's younger sister, Ileana. Ileana and the Legacy Virus? The one... No, this is way before Legacy Virus. Okay. But you remember, Strife had something to do with the legacy virus, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's Through the one that the legacy virus. I thought so. Okay. Um, but his his little sister, you know, she was part of the New Mutant, and her power was teleportation. Well, the okay the way her teleportation worked is she left the 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 normal what you would think of as the normal reality. She went to limbo and then moved a certain short space in limbo to reappear, you know, wherever in the normal world. And, it, and some, I want to say an X-Men evolution, they explained that Nightcrawler's teleportation works very similar. Is this where it goes into a different dimension kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. He got limbo in order to, to teleport. But anyway, so anyway, a bunch of demons live there in in limbo and they want to come and take over the earth. And so at one point, Ileana, previous to this, she was kidnapped into limbo raised by some wizard there and so when she came back she spent a short amount of time just in limbo when she came back she was a teenager rather than a little girl and but anyway uh wow. during inferno you know the demons wanted to come to take over earth they wanted to leave limbo come to earth and take right. everything over and to a certain degree they were doing that during the event if you have never read it i, I do recommend it probably one 
Uh, I, I'll have to look it up. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah. I do. I, I remember parts of what oh. you're saying. Okay. And anyway, by the end of it, um, well, I'm not by the end of it, but anyway, some of the head demons there, they kind of seduced Madeline with power to get her revenge because they wanted her to help them invade, you know, help get them into the earth dimension. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, they, they pretty much, uh, corrupted her with power, turned her into the goblin queen. She was even going to use Nathan to help open the portal, which would, you know, there, they had to have 13 mutant children to open the portal or something like that. And they would all die. You know, once the, the portal was open and the demons all came into the earth realm. It, I hate you, when that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn demons. Um, Stupid demons. Anyway, by the end of that, you know, she ends up dying. And Ileana ends up being turned back into the little girl that, you know, she was the age she would have been had she not been kidnapped into the limbo dimension and Anyway, that's a whole nother thing too. Yeah, it gets I, I, it can it, get convoluted. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all interconnected, and you know that's one of the things that makes comics during that time period probably some of my favorite. You know, during the eighties, about eighty three through about ninety four, ninety five. And not to misunderstand, there was, you know, some good yeah. stuff before that. But, you know, when you hit about 84, you got the secret wars going on. And, you know, it just kind of snowballs from there. And the mutant massacre is probably the best. I can't see it. That That's exactly what I pulled out. Mutant, mutant massacre. massacre. Yeah, that is probably the best of... At least the X Men crossovers. I want to say it's this probably is... the best of the. How much do you think this costs? This is a collection of all of it. Uh, trade paperback. What kind of papers in? Is it like that premium thick paper? Yeah, I think it's the, nice the nice colors. I don't know. Probably about twenty bucks. Twenty four ninety five. I was close. And this was back in. Um, I'm looking for a date on here when the mutant massacre occurred. Um, oh, I love that it has the different comics and how it ties together. Oh, and yeah. yeah. I haven't looked at this in a while. Uh, I've really got to go back. That's and... probably the best, at least of X-Men. I want to say it's probably the best. Chris Claremont. Over event with the most long-lasting effects in Marvel Comics because... That is where Warren was trapped in the sewer by the Marauders, and they basically destroyed his wings. Yeah, cut him off. It's pretty. No, they had the the, the medical people had to cut him oh. off because they oh. just, I mean, you got to think his wings are like bird wings. Their right. you know, bones are hollow and. They were just crushed, and there was no way for them to save it to, to save the wings. So you know, I'm hospital. feeling crazy here. I can't seem to find the um, the date on this anywhere. That, it's Mutant about massacre. 1984. 84 might be as late as 85. Because this one, I think, is an older you know collection of it. So it is. It is. Yeah. See, Thor was in this, and Thor, yes, Thor had a big part in it. Um. Now that one didn't quite have the reach as far as issues that it was in as yeah. the next big event, which was Inferno. But yeah, this had two, four, four, and power pack seven, and six, seven, eight, um, nine. It looks like eleven total X comics. Factor. Yeah, yeah. If you can see any of that, I, I want. I really want to say that was prob probably probably. The crossover with the longest effects, long-lasting effects of of any of the crossovers, because of course you know we get Archangel out of that not long 
after by about X factor number 25. In fact, I think like right. I, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Archangel came out of that. So one of the most was one of the, for me, when I've learned about it, cause I don't think I knew about it when it happened. You know, I, I probably honestly got that book from you. I wouldn't be surprised or, um, that collection or, or I went and got it after I saw what you had. And, uh, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is like kind of real, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, that one was, uh, you know, they still presented it in a fashion that would be approved by the comics code authority because of course at that time, right. That, that was the thing. Thing. So, you know, there were certain things that they couldn't do like, later on in X factor, like maybe the next issue or whatever, after they cut his wings off, worn wings off, you know, he yeah, pretty, yeah. he blows his brains out. Oh dear. oh dear. If I remember, he committed suicide. And I want to say it was, he blew his brains out. Now, of course they can't show that. that in the comic because now these days they could do it and get away with it. And nobody gives a shit. Just like but, DC, the um, killing joke. Oh my gosh! Authority has you know it's it doesn't exist anymore. Right. It's, it was well past its prime by the eighties <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um. But anyway, back to X Men ninety seven. <laughs> okay, I know. Hey, um, I'm gonna take a quick break. We're gonna stay on the live stream. Just can you talk about something? Talk about your channel for a second, and I'll be back in like two seconds. Okay. All right. And all that. So uh, show right. some figures if you want to. If yeah, I can and was, some stuff to, to say, I will. Okay, I'll, I'll be it. back. You know, I was talking about all this X-Men comic crap. <laughs> but uh, yes, I am the Digital Caveman. Digital Caveman Presents is my channel where I do lots of action figure and action figure related reviews. I've just gotten to the point where my channel is partially monetized. If you would care to check my channel out, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Ding the bell. Watch some videos. Uh, join uh, one of my memberships if it's right for you. And you're in a position that you can do that. That's always awesome. And it's a race right now to see who's going to be first. For memberships so if you want to be first at something you can sign up for memberships at digital caveman presents and the address for that of course is youtube.com forward slash at capital d digital caveman with two n's forward slash join and i would really appreciate that and if you know you can't do that then just watch a bunch of videos just put a playlist on and go to town. Yes, and uh, I'm back. Uh, yeah, check out um, Digital Caveman's channel there, youtube.com forward slash at Digital Caveman. You know, while, we're, while we're talking about all that, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel, Geek Home World. And because my friend Ed here, he needs all the subs he can get right now because we're trying, we're trying to get him at least partially monetized. That would and be nice. You can worry about zero dollars earned from zero members, just like me. Yay. I can share in your um awesome uh, awesomeness. <laughs> you have your little sound effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was I've got some here, but I can't reach my roadcaster pro to get to it because I've got my laptop propped up here. But um, uh, back to, back to X-Men 97. I promised we were going to get back and talk yes. about Bishop. And I'm sorry. I keep waving this around. It's a scalpel that I use to uh, work on. Do actors. surgery? Oh, you do surgery? <laughs> I do do surgery. I do do you, surgery sometimes. Are you Mr. Sinister oh, secretly? Yes. No, I just like cutting stuff. I don't care about genetics. The name is Sinister, Mister. But Sinister. um, I'll I'll wave this instead. It's a it's a flashlight, a pen light. So I'll wave that. <laughs> Less dangerous. I'm not going to cut myself. I'm not going to cut anybody watching. 
or anything like that because we don't want that to happen because that would be a bad no-no. No, No, that would be wrong. YouTube frowns on that. (laughs) Yeah, like YouTube's even watching. I said we were going to get back to Bishop. We'll get back. Let's let's talk about Bishop for a minute. We talked about finally. Finally, we got in X Men '97. We get Morph gets a a credit. He gets a credit up there in the opening, and so does Bishop. Yes, and I like well deserved. I like the fact that the intro. I know what you're going to say. Very true to the original, and then they they're adding stuff to it as well. Right, and extending the song just enough. Let's talk fits. about let's talk about well, well one last thing since we mentioned that the first episode to me my X-Men um Magneto isn't leading the team so he doesn't get a card his right. own card but second episode he did starting second episode they they do I think, and I like, him and I like that they did that I, I like that. I I thought that was a nice touch and because he takes the two I don't think the makes the X song is exactly the same I know that they had they changed it up just slightly um yeah but it's not super noticeable it right. it flows to me it flows just the same but anyway and, and one last thing uh, voice actors um i noticed cyclops uh, the gentleman that did that he passed away apparently and, yeah and uh, and i tell you the voice I actor mean, kudos to the different. voice actor who's doing cyclops because it sounds almost like the same guy so, it, it it really does i can't tell the difference i can't either Okay, moving on the bishop. Okay. Finally, let's talk about let's talk about bishop for a minute. Yes, sir. Now, bishop was the main character that they used during the animated version of uh, Days of Future Past, right? Which you know, in the comics, it was Kitty Pride. In the movies, it was Wolverine. Now, refresh my memory: is that where Cable was also coming from his past? No. no. No, 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 that wasn't Days of Future Past. No, Days that was Future, a different one. Days of Future Past is the one where we have Storm uh, with the fro or the, the Kitty, um, Kitty Pride comes back from the dystopian future where the Sentinels have pretty much taken over North America. Now, in the animated series, what, what is it in the animated series? It wasn't Kitty Pride, it wasn't Kitty Pride, it was Bishop. Bishop, Bishop comes, back. comes back in time instead of Kitty Pride. Um, mostly because I don't, I don't know if there was a rights thing going on with Kitty Pride or they just decided not to use her at all. But anyway, you know, Forge builds a time machine. Right. And Wolverine is the one who's supposed to come back in time. But Forge and Bishop decide that Wolverine is just too old to do it. And so Bishop ends up coming back in time. And of right. course, he loses his memory, and he thinks that uh, Gambit is the traitor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Kelly that starts the whole thing off, and so I want to say there was one more storyline that featured Bishop. There was, in the and um, original series, it was the one, one, probably my favorite one that had Cable come back from his time. His son Tyler was like disappearing and he had to go back in the past. So, and they had to use Wolverine to be infected by the virus from, from apocalypse so yeah. that the cable's future could exist. So millions have to die in the past so that billions can be born or something like right, that. Right. And I just love that and the action scenes in that were just awesome. Like when they're fighting in the street there and, and the X plane comes down because the second end episode basically retreads a lot of the footage from the first one. But it's you have to do this kind of like a groundhog day kind of thing because they go back and you know try to fix things and back and forth. And then they're fighting cable and he's on the top of the building shooting at Bishop and and Wolverine takes his claws and climbs up the building, which is cool. Like, there's so many good action scenes, and there's a whole montage of action in that episode, especially that second part that works really well. And it's you know, you see a lot of of cables um he kidnaps uh, Wolverine and to take him back and he takes him back to the apartment or whatever he's staying at. And yeah, he does a lot of the, uses a lot of his technology, like right, his right. oral spectral trail he can do with his, his cybernetic right. eye. Body slide uh, by one, one, two HQ. I, I love that. You know, and it's like, uh, 
But anyway, that's what made me really like, like Bishop. I, I think he was only in one other animated series storyline after that, and I I, I don't was remember. it Beyond Good and Evil? No, it wasn't Beyond Good and Evil. It was the one where Xavier. What if Xavier never existed, or gets killed, or something in the past? Did they adapt that for the animated series? I don't remember. There was one, yeah, because they had uh, they had the Fitzroy with um. That was the whole thing that started Fitzroy, off the Apocalypse. Was, Fitzroy, you know, it was um, right. He just, it was, you had Fitzroy with the other guy that kind of had yeah. He, he was kind Fitzroy, of a smart Fitzroy butt. Fitzroy was in the comics. Fitzroy it was like the was lackey. the 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 bad guy that came to the past. That Bishop came to the past. To maybe it's Fitzroy, but there was another guy with the, him because he had that. Is the one he, that killed his sister. Fitzroy, if Fitzroy is the guy I'm thinking of, I almost think he has like a green kind of outfit in the X Men the animated series, and he has that hair that's similar to what you showed on Nightcrawler earlier. Kind of has yeah, that wavy really kind of yeah. hairdo. So it's him, and there's a lackey. I don't know which one's called Fitzroy. I don't know. Fitzroy was kind of I his. I, I honestly, I don't remember. But that's the episode, Fitzroy, and they go back to like Fitzroy 59 when um, Xavier is in college yeah. or something, and then and it was playing off, yeah, yeah. What if uh like when Legion Quest and like like you said, what led to the age of apocalypse in yeah. the comics, which I have all the Legion Quest stuff out and all that. But anyway, back to Bishop. So that was the other episode that Bishop was in okay. that I can remember. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, he was only in one other storyline in the animated series and i can't remember I, what it is i think it had something to do with his sister shard and maybe there was something out. there was something with shard you're right but so anyway, that was he never stayed right so why why is he with the x-men now are we gonna uh, hopefully oh, we'll the last the why. last time he went back to his timeline he said nothing's changed I remember that, and I don't know where that falls. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe he came back. You know, I have to look at the last time we saw him and why he's there. So I like that he's there. Why, that's why I'm rewatching the the animated series because it's okay. been, you know, it's, it's been, been too at least long. ten years since I watched it on DVD. Right. The entirety oh. of it. Um. um cool. But so. But when I think of Bishop, you know, I think of how we had him in the 90s. He's got that m mullet and the goatee, and now he's not sporting that. He's sporting a shorter haircut. Well, I, I, I don't have a looks, problem with that because it's kind of updating bad. him. It's it's not a bad look for the character. But when I think of Bishop, I don't, you know, I think no. of the, the guy with the mullet. That's I understand that. I understand that. And, and that's fair. I don't, that's I don't fair. have a problem I don't have right. a problem with them changing, you know, the character up. To um, me, that's that's the same difference as you like in Wolverine in the brown suit and me liking him in the like yellow suit. Yellow and blue, yeah. Yeah, same same um, thing. Um, but what I was going to say was... I'm just like, why is he there? And the yeah. only thing I can figure out, and, I, I you know, I kind of hate to say this, but it, but I, indications to me are, are really pointing this way because... He really didn't have any effect on episode one or episode two. He was just kind of there. And I think right. he's meant to be a representative. A diversity now, hire. <laughs> Storm, he's, he's meant to be a representative. Which now is Storm fine. Storm has left the team. The, it's fine, though. I and, mean... I hope that's not the case, but it just it kind of feels either. like it because what I like is no his I like his powers, how you see it go through the 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 it goes through his veins and his arm. Oh yeah, and yeah. That is so oh, cool. Speaking about power effects, what about when they're fighting the sentinels in the junkyard? Mm -hmm. and Gambit charges up Wolverine's claws, and then they throw Wolverine, and he just poof, goes right that, through the center. That of is head. so, yeah, because Morph turns into Blob, mm -hmm. and, and, and and he bounces off his belt. Yeah, and goes yeah. And, airborne. And, oh, yeah, yeah that Morph is turns, such yeah, a... Morph turns into the Blob. 
Oh, that reminds me when they're falling out of the sky, the X-Men off the X-Plane, when the Sentinel tears it up and then Rogue has that moment right before she's about to catch um, Beast and whoever else. Or, and there's like that airplane wing that comes flying up. Does uh-huh. that not remind you of Superman Returns where he goes right yeah, to the yeah, wing? Yeah, it kind of does. It kind of I, I totally, I totally at the time thought of that. I was like, oh my gosh, is that like an homage to that? I thought that was pretty cool. You know, whether that was and, intentional or not. And, um. Oh, how about how about in that that last fight against the Sentinels when um, Beast? What, what, goes what, is no, what is it? Scott says something to Storm, like turn up the heater or or something, and she starts walking through the sand and the lightning striking around her is just turning everything to glass. Yeah, yeah. You, you, well, they, I love how they set it up. He said, he said, bring bring the bring the weather or bring something. I don't know how he said bring what Scott the, said. Bring storm or something like that. and then it, storm, and then right? before you even see a shot of storm that immediately that the um sentinel say omega level threat mutant You're delay mega yeah. level threat detected and then you see her come she the lightning yeah turns the sand to glass and then she just kind of glides across it and the lightning's coming down and then she does like the wind and lightning oh my gosh how how that was awesome that she got that moment and that moment's even more important now because that's really the last not the last thing we see of her but we see we got to see her kind of op you know well, and you know, then if the, she loses her powers later if it follows the comic storyline she does i don't remember how it is but she, she get, i looked it up i watched the video she, forge helps her begrudgingly kind of oh when they when forge and storm that's kind of back during the fall of the mutants. Yeah, because right. they're in an alternate reality or in the past or, or something. Something like that, yeah. With a dude named The Adversary. Right, yeah. I don't remember a whole lot of that. I do remember. I did read that. Because um, Fall of the Mutants to me is like one of the weakest crossovers because nothing actually crosses over. <laughs> Everything, you know, all three of the the x titles that they had running at the time x factor x-men right. and new mutants they all had that fall of the mutants uh right. headline on it but none of the stories were interconnected they were all three issues yeah the x-men had their own little storyline the new mutants had their own little storyline and that's hey. where that's where uh doug the um is his name doug Cypher. That's his code name is Cypher. That's Cypher. the one where Cypher dies. Okay. Follow the well, mutants. In X Factor, I, that's where Apocalypse finally shows up with Archangel. Yeah. During right. those three issues. And then um in X Men, that's the one where they go through the Siege Perilous and at the end of it, everybody thinks they're dead, but they're not. They're living in Australia. Right. The only um, one really, the only ones that really know they're alive are the uh oh Lord, the cyb the cyborg dudes. Um the Reavers. The Reavers. They're really okay. the only ones that know that they're alive because where the X Men decide to live in this abandoned town is a Reaver it, it's their headquarters. And the X-Men go in there and run them out. Right. Um, well, we, we probably need, I, I hate to wrap this up, but I don't know if I get two hours on, on the, on the stream yard here. I don't know if there's a time limit I mean, on it. It, it, it. Whether it's still on stream yard or not, it's on YouTube. Okay. Well, well, let's still keep like, going past two. Cause on the free version of stream yard, I don't know. Will it still keep I mean, recording? If you, if, you, if you need to, if you need to, to go, we can wrap it up and, I probably I probably do as well. Um, I, think, I, I got some I, other things to do. I mean, we're coming up on two hours, uh, yeah, about got, thirty seconds I, short I, of that. I got to go deal with some stuff for the wife, and I understand. I yeah, got I got a, a wife and puppy and uh, homework <laughs> to do. I took a break from my homework tonight. Homework. Yeah, I know homework. Um, but um, any closing thoughts about? x-men 97 or anything else that we've talked about 
I will say this about X Men '97. So far, the first two episodes, I'm really, really impressed with it, and I hope it keeps up this level. They they did what two uh, or three storylines in just two episodes. It's uh, like oh my gosh, surprising people in a good way. Yes, in a Let's good way. Let's not have any expectations subverted. Let's not have any boxes. <laughs> yeah. Let's not be trying to disseminate a message other than, you know, peace, love, and rock and roll. Yeah. Well, you know, X Men has always been great, serialized, just like the comics. It really was with the animated series. And I love that we're just basically picking it up. It feels like. 20, 30 years was yesterday, you know, and, and I saw I saw a thing where some hey, we may see Spider Man. They they all exist in the same universe. Um this is canon in Marvel. Marvel, I mean they said this is canon, but it's kind of its own thing. It's not so, it, I, I think Faggy said it's not canon to the MC. Right, but it's considered it's official. It, it is under, official. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, that's what matters. It's animated universe official. Right. So that's good enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Hey, as long as they keep it going like it is. I was so impressed. Episodes. And I have looking forward to Well, I was and able to stay up, awful. wake up at like 3 a.m. and watch it uh, like about 30 minutes after they debuted. Hey, I, I was, was up that night. I had school the next morning, but... <laughs> I won't be doing that on Wednesdays from now on, but Thursdays I will definitely be watching it first first chance I get uh, uh, break right between classes. Well, it should be on it should be on when the when blah, 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 blah. That Wednesdays at day. 3 a.m. Yes, but you can watch it later. I know, but it'll be I have Wednesday, to get up. Wednesday 3 a.m. just carries keeps carrying over to Wednesday at noon. One, two, three. No, 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 no. It's four. Wednesday three. Well, I know, but I, I'll, I have school Wednesday it drops, mornings. It drops the same time that Bad Batch drops. Watch I know. Which I've got one to catch up, I think, on Bad Batch um, final season. It it's, wasn't. There's some filler episodes in there, definitely. Yeah, and which is sad because it's not. It. This is the last yeah. season of it. It ain't long enough to have filler episodes. Right. Now, X-Men 97, we only get. 10 episodes so i feel like i'm getting more for my money with that show we are they are packing it is the longest of a marvel plus show disney plus disney plus is 10 because with bad batch we only end up getting six or seven maybe yeah possibly eight yeah something Uh, like that you know, most of the live action Marvel shows are only six to eight episodes. Right. That's true. That's um, true. And I take it, I take it back. You know what might have the longest Disney Plus run? No, X Men 97 is confirmed to have the, the longest run. No, because you're going to say Wars, Andor. The last season of Clone Wars, I want to say, had more than 10 episodes. Well, I think they're considering, they're not really considering, they're not really considering. Well, the the last season came before, before Disney Plus. The last is the only thing thing that's Disney Disney Plus. Plus. Okay. You know, everything except the last two seasons was Cartoon Network. Right, right, right. Then the next to the last season was Netflix and then direct to video. I forgot it was on Netflix. And then the last season was Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Remember it was codenamed The Lost Episodes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I think they were trying to put them out on yeah. DVD or something or Blu-ray and you know to get you to buy them, which they're starting to put some of the Disney Plus stuff on um Yeah, I've seen like the steel books of uh WandaVision and they're okay. Like I, I'll stream it. I don't think I'm gonna buy yeah. any because I got away from buying physical media. Yeah, well, the, most everybody has unless they're a physical media. Collector. Since I got a 4K I television, to finally, to be. I would, I would like to have a 4K disc, but I don't really, I don't have an Xbox that 
well, the one that plays 4K. So I don't really have anything to play it if I got a 4K disc. Like I'd say, like to get. You have to get you a 4K uh, Star Wars box set that's got you know one, two, three, four, five, and six in it. Uh, that's to the Blu-ray. I don't even know if there's a 4K version out there of Star Wars. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't think there is. I don't think they've released a 4K. I don't think they ever did 4K on it all. And I wouldn't be surprised if after the, you know, some of the, the, the prequels and stuff come out in the theaters or if it's just episode one coming out for the anniversary, maybe they'll go back and remaster them. But, you know, everything's going to be, it's all going to, if they even bother to put out physical product, you know. The, it'll probably be streaming. There, I think there will still be some physical product available to get. It just, just major things. Widely yeah. available. Um, right. If anybody's going to carry it, it's going to be Amazon. Right. Yeah. Because Walmart, uh, they're getting rid of it, and that means they're probably not going to carry it online right. either. Best Buy has already gotten rid of their physical media sections in their and, and including online i think they're not even gonna sell it online so i wouldn't like, know i haven't looked at best buy online for i don't know uh, i get i i bought my tv from there so yeah i still get information but they send me sales all the time but i'm like not oh, that's the emails i just ignore them yeah i like I to look at and see what's out there but i'm not buying anything uh, so it doesn't really matter right now you know um, but um Huh, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, X Men '97 final word is well, it's maybe fantastic. Maybe next week we can talk about the next episode. Oh yeah, well, I've got no problem with that because I would no like I would, I'd like to talk about Magneto too, but I I don't think we'd have time. Oh my gosh, yeah, we're two um, uh, over two hours now on this yeah. for this live stream. We'll, we will save Magneto for for the next. Yeah. And for those who are listening, because this will be on podcast, this is also an audio podcast form wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we are, um, oh, which I wanted to mention, Google Podcasts sent me a thing that this month, I think they're getting rid of Google Podcasts. So that's my favorite podcast apps going away. But I have everything on Pocket Casts, which I've been there for several months. Um made that switch in Amazon music. I can listen to my podcast there. So, um, of course on, um, what is it? I, what, it's not iTunes anymore. It's Apple podcasts, I guess. Uh, we're still there. Geek yeah. home world. So crazy. wherever you listen, you, please, um, you know, um, listen there, but for the audio podcast, I wanted you to plug your channel, the address and everything. So people can know, right. including Instagram. So, I want to thank Digital K Man for joining me for this wonderful, um, fun episode. I was first awesome. this <laughs> I was I was really bursting at the seams to talk about X Men, and I was so hyped up today to talk about. It. I was like, "We got a fight," and I was hoping you would say you had time. So, thank you for having time. <laughs> but um, so tell everybody where they can find you, your social media spots. I, I am Digital Caveman with two ends on Instagram. You might can still find me on Twitter or X or whatever the hell they call it. These days. I don't know. I haven't, there's nothing. I've not posted anything on there in probably three years. Same here. I, I just promote the show there, but I that's it. Quit using it. I was super excited about Twitter when it first started. And yeah, it was different <laughs> for those of you that remember the G4 channel, yeah. the oh, yeah. show yeah. back of the show. Yeah, that was the only reason I had a Twitter account, so I could. I see Chris Gore on some podcasts now. So, uh, by the that. way, uh, speaking of Chris Gore, his little document documentary about Attack of the Show is available on YouTube to watch. I yeah, I saw that. At one point, he hit me up on Twitter. He hit me up on Twitter. I'm sure oh, I wasn't yeah, the only one. Oh yeah, like and, uh, and I, I I I had started the correspondence with him, but I didn't think I. I don't think I like continued it and all that. I well, he didn't never he contacted me one time. I was like, Hey, yeah, sure. And, and then I never heard back from him. Yeah. But that was the, the only reason I started a Twitter account was so I could tweet along with attack of the show. And in fact, I was the very first tweet <laughs> that they showed on air. That's cool. Mine was the very first tweet. 
I'm sure you don't have that recorded anywhere. <laughs> oh, I wish I did. I used to have it on a DVR, but I no longer have Comcast, uh, yeah. so that DVR is long, long, long gone. Um, uh, just like all of our digital stuff, if we have one EMP, all this doesn't exist. We'll be going back to comic books. We'll be going. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm I'm digital caveman with two ends on uh, Instagram. And every once in a while, I post something other than a promo for YouTube stuff. But for the most part, it's it's YouTube promos and okay. So, what's your stuff. YouTube address? Uh, YouTube is youtube.com slash at capital D Digital Caveman with two ends. Okay. And to check out my memberships, you put all that in and slash join, and you can see my membership offers. And the different tiers and the pricing structure and what you get for each for the memberships. Right. That's cool. That's something I'm aspiring to. So you're 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 leading the way for me. Get there, man. Maybe I'll have some experience with it by the time you get there, and and uh, I can help you out with it. But did uh, you ever get on TikTok? Or I know it might be I, going away. I do have a TikTok account, but I keep going back and forth with you. Don't really just not using it. I and understand that. I never really got any traction there. Not that I get a whole lot of traction on Instagram. I, I'm like, I just don't need another app. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to find me. I, I just, I don't I, know. I don't know. I don't, I don't really get the, the TikTok stuff and the shorts. Although, yeah, I'm not going to get up and dance and make a fool of myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I am in the process of, of trying to create a shorts series. Sweet. And we'll just see how it goes. Mostly, I, I just have to do a little bit of research for it, I understand and that. filming for it, and I just have to find time in my and, uh, through through one of my classes. I'm learning better editor skills, so I may be working closer with you and editing stuff. Who knows? I might one day you might turn on this channel and not just see me live streaming or recording stuff. You may actually see some pre-planned videos scripted and everything. I don't know that I'll have the time. But... As long as it remains fun, that's the important thing. And that's, you know, I'm not chasing numbers. Would I like to get monetized? Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to drive story, my content. Really. I'm not yeah, trying to I'm, follow an al algorithm yeah, either. I'm, I'm going to make the content I want to make. And for the most part, I'm going to make, the content the way that i want to make it right and you know if monetization happens if you know i have i used to have the now, yeah, and i used to have a lot of time great, in the world. If i don't you know i'm just gonna create content until it's not fun to to do this anymore exactly and, and the, the other thing for me is it's, it's got to be kind of streamlined at this point because I've got less patience. Maybe it's getting older, but I've got less patience and I have less free time, it seems, than I used to have. So I, I would like to act, react to stuff in a more timely fashion, but I, it needs to be kind of shorter and sweeter or, you know, in, in a concentrated period of time. And it's got to be the most streamlined, easiest way accessible because I'm not trying to learn new systems and, you know, I am you trying mean, to learn like things. You're but... going to school for right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me there, but um, I'm yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning these different things, but until I can really implement those, I'm just trying to do yeah, it. Let me tell way. you guys. Um, I was I was trying I was trying to help Ed with 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 some of his stuff the other day but the program that i use is totally so completely different from what he's using i was like we'll see if it's got this feature well i can't find that and and it's so it, I, it I, might be there i just don't know what it is yet i'm still well, learning I'm, you know i i think what it is is it's just going to take you some time it's a learning using curve. it to learn it and, and literally you know, there's parts of the interface like the way that in the, the way that stuff shows the way it displays and from working in the, 
especially a mostly audio environment, it's a little, it's some of it's the same. I get the general concept, but the interface is just not as user friendly as I'm. It is, it is not to. intuitive at all. And, and there's like a um, sliding kind of uh, thing. You know, I'm used to just having a slider where it just goes, when you go left, it goes left. You don't, it doesn't, you know, pinch down and then you yeah, have to make yeah. it smaller or bigger. And I'm yeah. literally finding that my canvas space, even if I go on the bigger TV that I have in the house and uh, plug in, because you can't stream from the program directly to the TV like I can other things. So I'd have to, I'm going to have to try to HDMI, HDMI out of the laptop into the TV, the big TV. And then, you know, at least I'll have a bigger monitor or a bigger screen so I can, I'm getting older and my eyes are what they used to be. My vision's good, but it's still not what it used to be. So it's, things are harder, you know, and I need it considerably bigger, the screen, so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I love the sound effects there. So I don't when, know. It's, if you want to go through them all real quick? So, and, do what? And we'll just go through the sound yeah. effects real quick. All right. It's now time for sound effects. <laughs> Awesome. I don't know what this one is. It's just a number. It might be some kind of music track. So I hope. Oh dear. That's supposed to be a kiss. That's what it's labeled as. I... Oh dear. <laughs> supposed to be gunshots. Oh, that sounded like somebody typing an old typewriter. Wait, listen, listen, you, you'll hear him cock the gun. Oh, dear. Before it starts going off. Remember, gun safety is important, everyone. <laughs> is that like... <laughs> it's labeled slash, but that's not what it sounds like to me. It sounds like uh, Indiana Jones with his whip. Yes. What? 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 I want to say this is probably one of my favorite ones to use. I hey, we we picked up a viewer right now towards the end here. Oh, we? Wow, awesome! Welcome, viewer. Welcome Let's to see. the end of the show. Oh, that's. I love <laughs> it. You guys are so great. It I sounds like Rogue. That's just so <laughs> great. That's us. This sounds, this is it. almost like, hey, so Digital great. Game Man, this is, this is almost like an old uh, dig, uh, Digital Man Cave episode. Yeah, like it? that it's turned into that. Where we had, uh, or the diabetes oh, episode. No, no, the one where we had the soundboard on our phone. It was Duke Nukem versus uh, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> one oh my gosh. Of my favorite episodes. That was we one of my so favorites. Oh, so, so much fun on that one. Uh, and we used to, I used to always have the clever titles for the podcast names. Oh, uh, yes, yes. I remember when we used to try and come That up. was like one of the things like you try to always like, outdo first, ourselves. The first six episodes were all like we tried to theme them off of like Star Wars type. True. Title. Well, the first one, it was 2008 and we did um, The Dark Knight was out. And so... I, I think I called it. Was it the pot? No, the well, 2014 is when this one started 10 years ago. It, but one of them was like, this one was, uh, what was it? I know I had the sound bite on there when I was looking for people to join the podcast where the Joker says, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker says, um, we're taking a tryout. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yeah. But, um, Gosh, I'm, this is really taking me back. And it's I, ironic. I just realized something. This is episode 170 of the Geek Home World podcast. We went exactly 150 episodes of Digital Man Cave. So wow. I've now gone 20 episodes past that. Which I I, I was awesome. supposed to. I know I was supposed awesome. to have done so many, but the last couple of years have been. Eh. Kind of weird and tumultuous. Well, you know, moving and 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 moving to a new town all and that stuff, you know. It, it yeah, and then pandemic and this and that. And God knows. And 
all the fun stuff. So, um, yeah, um, we're just looking at and doing, keep doing what we're doing here and, um, and all that you're doing your thing on your channel and, and we'll definitely start doing more live streams like this. I'm, I'm enjoying them. It's fun. Um, it's much easier. It's much more fun when it's not scripted like tonight. I think we did a really good job for the majority of the episode up till this last, what, uh, you, 10 or you 20 minutes. For all those comic book segues. But they were related to X-Men. It tied into they what were, we were talking about here. To what we were talking about. So, so we, we, were, we were in the neighborhood. We all topic. So. We were in we were in the same state at least. <laughs> in the same state. Um so uh yeah, I guess I need to bring this to a close. I've got a million things to do and tons of homework. <laughs> We've got so much stuff to do. I don't even know how to think straight, but I got a lot done today. So today was a good day. I feel accomplished. And that's important, you know. You don't always win the race, but if if you're getting stuff accomplished, then yeah, that's, that's sometimes that's that's the life of battle. Say when I was using two monitors. Oh gosh, yeah. I would say I don't know if it actually makes me any more efficient at doing stuff, but it made me feel like I was. Yeah, I literally I'm looking at I have an old monitor that that's an old actual Asus, Asus, A S U S. Mon. It's it might be 19 by 20. It doesn't look like it. But it doesn't it doesn't quite do the whole widescreen thing. And I have another one that's still a good they're still good monitors. You can't you can't destroy these things. They just they're they still run. And I've got another monitor here for when I have a guest when I get the studio finally cleaned up one day and ready. Like hopefully before you come to visit. Uh oh, yes. spoiler alert. But then I've got my old old TV there that's literally I've had that thing since about 08. And it's not it's not a 4K because 4K didn't exist. Right. It's a 1080p, 4K, 4K but that's a matter. that is a damn good TV. It's an RCA, and that thing will not die. <laughs> it just will oh, it's not like die. man, I still have I still have one tube TV left, and it's an Apex. Oh my gosh! And my Apex. God, I swear to I used God, to sell thing, those. <laughs> it's a 32 inch. No, no, no. Is it bigger than I don't know. I don't remember what size it is. I want to say 32 was big in. back in the day. Yeah, that that thing weighs 500 pounds if it weighs an ounce. It's you, you and I both remember CRT TVs that were like oh this Lord. deep and so hey, it, can't, it can't be no worse than the time that uh, Chaos and I were working on on remodeling the TV wall and electronics at Walmart, oh. and we put the last damn tube TV on there, and the whole some bitch collapsed. Well, I think y'all tried to tell somebody to that about out. that. But y'all were y'all were told to do that, weren't you? Or we were told know. to do it was our job. We were overnight resetting all the mods during a remodel. And we won't mention where this was. <laughs> and you know, we figured out why the TV wall fell. It's because it wasn't secured properly when they moved the warehouse rack. They didn't secure it. They all they did was bolt it into the damn sheetrock. And and the weight of those those TVs. I, I do not miss like the twelve foot section. I do not missing having the bullpen. You remember the bullpen, oh. and then we had the racks out in the aisles, and then you had to lift those. I could back in the day. I could lift a twenty five inch TV CRT TV myself. I could. Uh, oops, excuse me. <laughs> My volume. Oh, remember, remember. I could. I could, I, could do, I could do as much as a thirty two inch. Yeah. But you kind of had to. It depended on what brand it was too. Like those Sanyos, yeah, Sanyo TVs. Man, those things, thirty-two inches of TV, that was still light. Right. You compare that to like a Philips Magnavox. Now, dude, the geez. all the flat panels, you can't even lift a flat panel if you tried. It's like my TV in the air. I tried to move that thing. I well, think I need help. The thing about the flat panels now is they're it's not that they're heavy, it's that you just can't get your arms around them. Well, I, I did wide. that and touched the screen because there's nowhere to touch. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. where do I put my freaking hands? How do I hang <laughs> this thing up? I how can't. Do I, how do I, look this thing? I know it's like crazy. That's why people put them on the wall That's and leave crazy. them there. But um just so I don't touch it, a special crane. I know. So <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah. Those, those are the days. Days. 
But yeah, I still have that one CRT TV hanging out. I I still have one CRT computer to monitor. Damn. And I still have the computer that goes with it. I don't know if it works anymore. I have a desktop here somewhere that I need to do something with. I was gonna do when I was thought I was gonna do live streaming and bring a game streaming in, but now yeah. my like the laptop I have now can easily do that. But um my last paperweight of a laptop that was this, you know, super thick. Yeah. <laughs> it lasted uh, about five years and it still works. I turned it on not too long ago, but oh my gosh, it is so incredibly slow. Ten years for it to start up. Basically. And it's, it doesn't, I, I had fixed the fan on it just trying to get me to the finish line. And thank God I went back to school because I was able to get a newer laptop that was far more efficient, but it'd been if you wait five or six years and, you know, in computers, like this is our tech talk that I haven't done on the podcast, right? <laughs> uh, if you wait like five or six years, you're so obsolete at this point. Technology is moving so incredibly fast that it's, you know, stuff can get pretty slowed down if, if they don't throttle it down like some of the phones like Apple does. Who they're going to, you think they're going to split Apple up? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I don't think the government's going to do it. No, Apple owns too much of the government. <laughs> and uh, I think it's a compatibility issue. They, 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 I think they'll get a little bit more open sourced or they'll try to push that. I think that's really what they're going after. You know, I think, and, I think that's more of what, what needs to happen is, is it, there needs to be more cross platform. Right. And I really think that's what Microsoft is shooting for, especially in the well, you, video you, game you, arena. Well, you know that they're going, they're get, they've announced that they're getting out of the console business. There might be one more Xbox down the line, and then they're just which they're is a shame because I've always abandoning. Liked, I've liked their hardware. I've always thought that their yeah. hardware was a little better. Well, maybe not the hardware. I. I felt like when they definitely have the ecosystem. When Xbox Live was a thing, you know, to me it's that a, was the easiest platform, right? To play online more than, games on. more than PlayStation, and because I know we tried several times with PlayStation Three, yeah. and it just it was a horrible was it? experience. Well, it's it was totally. And it was kind of you get what you pay for too. Now, of course, you have to pay that's for that true, the PlayStation true. Store. PlayStation at the but time. But you're, you're you're talking about the interfaces versus the hardware. I always thought, even though the Blu-ray won out over the HD DVD. You remember the Xbox had the HD DVD. I almost got one, but then I ended up getting a PlayStation. I was like, oh, well, that's just much more sense. The Blu-ray and everything was going Blu-ray anyway. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I have like a PlayStation 3 that I can't really do anything with now. It won't upgrade. It's not even on their site. It won't update. Um, it won't update. And it's. I can't even remember the last time I turned mine on, but I don't even I think. I can't it's remember cool. the last time I turned it on either. I don't think and, it's connected to the internet. I was just using it as. It was my Blu ray player. Yeah. It was the most affordable Blu ray player out there. It was and the then, versatile. It was very much so. When and I, I always felt like it looked thing. better. You remember when 3D was a thing? Yes, yes, I do. And if you had a 3D TV, you couldn't hardly get a a 3D Blu-ray player. Except that is, for the I've waited so 3D. long to get a TV. I wanted desperately to get in on that 3D action and have Aren't the disc you so and glad stuff. You missed out on it now. No, well, I guess now I am, but I still wanted that option. It's I just, wanted to experience that, and I couldn't experience it honestly, in my home. The technology I afford a TV. is just not there yet. It's just not there yet. It's it's still not, but 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 I wanted to have that in home experience, like some now, people when have. I get but it to I didn't. The point of a holodeck, I'm all in. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> I we'll be so old, old stuff, man. They'll just yeah, upload we'll, us to the holodeck. We'll live in the holodeck. I'll be fine with that. I'll be on Riza. Constituted you, matter that they use in a holodeck. You and me will be hanging out in Riza. <laughs> with um, uh, um Jamaharon. We'll take yeah, one of whoever them else. Around. Jamaharon. And some uh, Dabo girls. No. <laughs> we're we're both married. We have our Dabo girls, right? <laughs> we love our ladies. Uh, yes. We we're do. so lucky. 
Um, oh, look, I just got a, uh, it's after 12. This week on Digital Caveman Presents, March Woo-hoo! 25th, 2024 through March 29th, 2024. Now see, if you were in the middle tier of my membership, you would have gotten that Friday night. You don't say. Yes, yes. Cool, cool. So, okay, let's make quick predictions. What's going to happen in the next episodes through here's our little extra content because I, I already kind of consi- it's hard, it's consider hard our episodes hard. ended but it's hard to say where it's been 97 it here um we you know we, sentinels they're they're pretty much played out at this point yeah they've killed master mold again <laughs> again all the master molds this is like what the 14th time uh, uh, not that many, but yeah, definitely. Okay, like, maybe not in the animated years. show, but they certainly killed him a lot yeah. of times. And uh, I like having the Sentinels around, but yeah, they're gonna evolve them. Sentinels always or, usually make for a good, yeah, a good episode. Usually, I did have a problem in Night of the Sentinels, the first two episodes. Like, compare in some of the shots, they were so incredibly large compared to you know their scope and size well, or whatever you call. It. I think they do a much better job scale wise now with the animation than they used to because scale wise yeah. in the eighties and the nineties hand drawn animation scale wise was just all over the place. I mean it was just you freaking back, hard you go back and you look at something like the Transformers cartoon. Robots in disguise from wah, from wah, wah. the G one the sound and even up through the, the you know the movie in season three and what you know, the beginning of season four, what would have been season four of it. You know, I mean, there were just scale issues all over the place. The, the robots were never the same size. Well, the only you have that with some of your models there in your in your studio there, um, like your Star Wars ones, the different ones that were different. What do you call it? Ratios? What is it called? Sizes? Scale. What, what you, scale. Yeah, because you have like some of your clone trooper stuff. You oh know. yeah, I, got, I you know I used to be heavy into the three and three quarter Star right. Wars, and then the ones that are like super big that aren't aren't big big, but they're just like too big. Like I have uh, one of my X wing fighters, scale. like they're, um like this one right here. Water. This um yeah, see that's uh that's the three and three quarter. Yeah, this is a little. I mean, it's it's man. nice when you have the figures and stuff like that, but I kind of just wish it this were a lot smaller. You know, well, you know, they do have that uh micro galaxy line. Oh, do I have this upside down? That, oh. uh, has much smaller. Oh my gosh, that's been upside down the whole time. <laughs> oh, like this one, right? Right, yeah, it's much, much smaller. Yeah. I love the sound. My favorite sound is probably the TIE fighter sound, that ion engine. I used to be able to kind of do it, and I, I'm sure I can't do it now. But um, if I'm not trying to do it, I can do it. And <laughs> of all the tech in Star Wars, the Ion Engine that this is based on yeah. is the only thing that's almost theoretically possible yeah. that we yeah. can do. Star Wars is um, very far- much fantasy versus the tech of Star Trek people and the came up in the industries, the, the rockets and stuff like that. They all came up watching star trek and tried to make you know the pad p-a-d-d yeah yeah we have it now those were i it's called the ipad it's called whatever you know it's called tablets it's everything else you know so much technology came through star trek that's because that's more doable and star trek inspired a lot of of, of yes it's inspired a lot yes cell phone and William Shatner's got a documentary or whatever coming out. I just saw. Uh, I just saw where that's. Uh, it's out. I think. Well, you have to let me know. I have to look it up and see if it's playing here, so I can check it out or, or when it's going it, to. I feel like it's going to go straight to video almost. It probably is like the captains. <laughs> yeah. Which was but, uh, I thought it was really good, except for like where he was interviewing. Um. Oh uh, Lord, what's his name that played Cisco? This, I'm hanging on to my little Amazon Avery gift card Brooks. there. Avery, the interview I'm, with Avery Brooks was a little weird. Yeah. Do you hear me? I'm I'm, I'm collecting my Amazon gift cards. I'm going to try to yes institute yes. a second camera a, a second camera setup yes. in here. So we can see two angles. 
of yeah but then i'm gonna have to really kind of some of those boxes of comics and <laughs> electronics i'm gonna have to you just have to set your camera on top on the place of them that way you um, can't see them. i'm gonna try to make this more of a studio and hopefully you know we hit the pandemic and you know couldn't go near people for almost years it seemed like and so now we're kind of getting into it we've already into a new normal um but you know i'm hoping to maybe have some people ever you know who knows we'll see what happens june toward the end of june that's right and then well there goes the surprise there <laughs> you may be my first in you will probably be my first in studio person if i can get everything together I've been trying forever and I just, I just never seem to have the time and actually I've run out of space. I may have to get rid of some junk. I have my box of cables over here on the floor, you know, cause you always have to have those cables. Yeah, your, your box of random cables. Yeah. I have random one. cables. I don't know how many HDMI's I have in there. I see some, some old speakers from like oh, one of my desktop you computers. Know, you never know when you're going to need that micro USB cord. You never know when you're going to need that USB to USB cord. Uh, you and, never and, know. and I could. Oh, I'm what sorry. Was, what was it? What was the one that was kind of shaped like a short, fat T? It was one uh, of the USBs. I can't remember what it is, but it. it I can't remember. It's like two, there was a USB A generations of cords back. And there was, it was a USB A, like just like the thick short, one. Fat. It's kind of like a brick, like I think, if I remember correctly, the yeah, USB A is. A, you know, you never know when you're going to run across something where you need. One of those old cords that they don't make anymore. True. And I was thinking, um, gosh, what is it? Um, yeah, the yeah. other thing I was telling you earlier before we recorded, my Roadcaster Pro I've had forever. And somehow I've lost the, the little micro SD card. It's, it's not as big as your fingernail, they're so small. And I don't, I always have it in the machine or I know where it's at. And I'm so proud of myself. I've always been spot on and somewhere along the line recently it's i've lost out. it it's yeah so i don't so i can't record this has it i know must be well oh the, the puppy i hope no, you didn't no, eat no. it the, the oh. actual carpet monster the the carpet you it, it fell in the carpet and it disappeared god don't say it, that it fell through a void into another dimension yeah well i'll need my optic blast to go into another dimension to find yes. the cats but um I'm, I'm not going there. It's Me either. The mention of concussive force. And you know, as soon as I say that, I'm going to like look one day, just look down and it's going to be there. You know what you're I mean? Gonna roll, you're going to roll your chair back and you hear snap. Yeah, that's and exactly what happens. Like, oh, there it, it is. Both pieces of it now. It was there. <laughs> now it's in pieces. I even have a little adapter that... you. Uh, SD to micro SD for the next episode. Do what? What do you see for the next episode of oh. X97? Oh, That's what well, we're supposed to be talking well, about. Well, we're sorry. <laughs> um, well, I definitely see Madeline Pryor. I think they they have to since she's at the door, they're gonna start with that. I think it's gonna go yeah. right into that. Um, we're uh, we're gonna see a continuation of storms situation i feel like that's going to drag on for a couple episodes but the breakneck I, pace I'm, they're going they could I'm thinking, I'm thinking she won't be back to the last episode of the season oh like in the clinch like in the oh the last oh where is it yeah, i don't have the I, list i'm thinking i'm thinking at some point maybe episode five about halfway through the show i guess since we're going through it i might as well bring that uh, up if i can we might i had a listing i had a listing of what the episode names were but I'm, and, I'm guessing like maybe episode five or six, we're going to have a solo storm episode uh, where you know, she's wrestling with her identity and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe dear. some clue as to her getting her powers back. I, I, I know I had it saved somewhere. I felt like I sent it to you at some point. And then the name at the end the, and in the clutch yeah did you hear me on that i think i had a name yeah, a list of the episode names yeah. um i guess i could look it up real quick um no 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 don't worry about it tonight save it for because next that episode. would that would kind of um well that could be a good teaser for our next episode x-men 97 um what do you call it what would you call that titles episode titles episode titles thank you 
episode titles. Go list on Disney. Oh, here's the list. Okay. Um, March 20. Okay. That's that. that, 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 that. Oh, episode three is called Fire Made Flesh. Sounds Phoenixy. No, I think it's going to have to do with Demon Goblin Queen. Oh, it, this is what it says. When a visitor arrives at the mansion with a dangerous secret that threatens Cyclop and Jean, Cyclops and Jean's relationship, the team is propelled into a tragic uh oh, tragic confrontation with an immortal mad scientist. But, but then we have okay, then we got a two parter for April 3rd and the following one coming up on my birthday. Mon Motendo slash Life Death Part One. M hmm. O T E N D O. And then it says slash Life Death is one word. The fourth installment, oh, it's it's first of two parts. Um, they have a description here. I'm not going to read the description, but I can tell you what it's about. And so there's one in that. That's the seventh and tenth episode four and five. Excuse me, that's the third and the tenth. Remember it is the second part. Um, then we have Life Death Part Two, episode six. They split it. They put a, an episode between a two parter. So, so April 17th. I wouldn't necessarily say a filler episode, but maybe a like a bridge episode. It's called Remember It. The, it's um, Genosha's, it. That sounds like a Genosha's, Genosha's getting into the UN. So it's around that. Well, around know, that. That's what they said uh, at the end of episode two. Right. Um, so then we have like Life Death Part 2 is episode 6 on April 17th. Uh, April 24th, we have Bright Eyes. And it's a, I'm, it just says it's a Cyclops-related episode. I'm not going to read the... I'm trying to be spoiler-free on this. Episode 8, Part 1, another two-parter. Tolerance is Extinction. Actually, this is what ends the series. I think it's 8, Tolerance is, is Extinction, Part 1. That's episode 8, May 1st. Tolerance is Extinction Part 2, May 8th. And the 10th and final episode is Tolerance is Extinction Part 3, air date May 15th. And it's about mutant-human relations. So right. I feel like Storm might be coming back. And like you said, maybe that's when she comes back. It doesn't look like just looking at those titles, just right off the bat, it doesn't look like anything specific Storm yeah, related. Yeah, and I don't think they'll go all the way into next season and not give Storm her powers back. I feel like she'll get them back, or maybe she'll get them in a portion of them back or something. Yeah. But I hope we get her back to full power sooner than later, of course. But it's so tragic. I mean, they did such a good job. And X-Men is really not a kid's, especially this version is not really for this kids. It's is not adult. A yeah. It's it's nostalgia it's it's for those of us who want it exactly what it is which is a continuation is right a more adult a continuation of what we watched 30 years ago and then that's right. not to say a kid can't watch it, it it's yeah. not there's some parts that are a little scary but i think more, kids can handle it these it's days not any more violent than you know the original show Right, right. Uh, only the biggest difference I can see in it is maybe a little bit of uh, more adult language, but that's to me uh, maybe a yeah. total of three words in two episodes. Right. If I remember correctly, it it wasn't much. I mean, it was there, but it wasn't much, and it wasn't, you know, anything. You know, they weren't dropping f bombs or anything. Yeah, of course not. Um. And, uh, you know, here's something that um, here's a point that kind of ties back. And I don't want to go back into the conversation necessarily, but speaking about wokeness and when this is X-Men essentially sees this is 1997, people weren't thinking in a woke kind of fashion back then. So far from it, far out from it. And it was a different it was just a different time. And um, 
you know, for better or worse, it was just a different time. And so for them to get really progressive with stuff and make stuff woke goes against what they're doing here. They might as well start, if they started a new X-Men series, fine, you know, but if you're continuing and so far so good, but if they're continuing like they are with this from the animated series to X-Men 97, then this season and next season. And if there's a third season, hopefully there will be, um, you, and, you can't really, unless you do a time jump, you know, it's not really appropriate to have that. It just doesn't go with the time. If you're going with the time of when these shows were made or when they're supposed to be taking place. Right. Right. You know, if you're keeping your story straight and, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw one, one final tidbit and then, you know, we need, okay. to, we we need, need to wrap it up. A lot of people want to say, that Stanley created the X-Men to battle racism. And I don't know, that may be in, that may have been something in the back of his mind when he created the X-Men, but the right, biggest right. thing, biggest reason he created the X-Men was he was tired of coming up with individual origin stories for superheroes. Yeah, yeah. How many, how many um, spiders can you get bit by? You know, how many? Yeah, well, you, they're born that way. That's the explanation. They're born that way. Yeah, they're born Mutants. as a, and no other explanation needed. Yeah. You know? No, that's not to say they don't. It's not. Have, it's not lazy writing. It actually <laughs> makes no, sense because no, you can no. only come up with so many unique origins. <laughs> You know, there's only so many guys who can go into space and get bombarded by cosmic rays. Right. And Fantastic. Bit by a radioactive right. spider and right. given the super soldier serum. Right. And, you know, build a, 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 a micro circuit suit and create a shrinking. Uh, I am Iron Man. Suit, you know. Uh, so, yeah. But, I mean, you know, it. it it was a quick and easy way to get a book out yeah without having to spend a lot of time explaining the you, origin of you know you just, how you just gave me a what if imagine everybody that was in the mcu is cast as they are right but imagine we lived in a in a world where ant-man created ultron like in the comics in the MCU, imagine the MCU is like that. And Paul Rudd's Ant Man, it doesn't work, does it? He would be no, the smartest man no, alive. No, no, no. It wouldn't work. And uh, well, it was never, you know, the character that Paul Rudd plays. It, uh, of course, is Scott Lang, right? And Scott Lang was not a scientist like Henry Pym. He was an electrical engineer, right? And he just got caught up in some bad stuff and he went to jail. And, you know, he learned his lesson going to jail. And, you know, he wanted to walk the straight and narrow when he got out of, of prison. And, uh, you know, somewhere along the way, he met uh, Hank Pym. And, right. And some reason or another, Hank decided to let him have the suit and the Pym particles. And, and to be Ant-Man because at the time, of course, um, Hank was not Ant-Man. He was into his fourth superhero persona. I want to say it was his was fourth. Yellow Giant Jack. Man or some, or, or Yellow Jack. He was Ant-Man yeah. and then he went Giant-Man and then he went Goliath, which Goliath oh. and Giant-Man basically same thing. the same thing, just different costumes. And then, um, you know, he kind of lost it for a bit and became Yellow Jacket, and then he ends up losing it again later after yeah. that. I mean, I'm happy with how Ant Man went until, of course, Quantum Mania. <laughs> and you know, I don't, you know, I didn't, I didn't hate Quantum Mania. Yeah, it just, it wasn't the best. I just don't think the track record they had with Ant Man. And Paul Rudd, you know, it was much more of a comedic take 
Right. All of a sudden, he's serious and everything. And, and it just didn't. By the third one here, we're introducing yeah. who's King the Conqueror and the main villain of the next phase. He gets or, beat by Ant Man. Yeah, I, I mean, guess come on. Phase. But you know, they're introducing the big baddie in an Ant Man movie, who you know is not the serious guy. Right. You know, and and he's one of the lesser heroes. He's not a what I would call it, even though Iron Man technically honestly, wasn't honestly we're all B B level. Up until but, up until the MCU started, right. Most of the Avengers were, you know, they weren't what you would consider top tier. They were like tier two or character. level B or something. Yeah. Your Especially top Iron Man. Your top tier characters were, were more Spider Man and X Men. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's not how it always was. You know, I mean, in the comics, when, when Marvel Comics first started off, and, you know, all those guys were, were you know, top-tier guys because they were brand new. And you get to the Avengers, it's like, you know, let's make a team up of the best of the best. And at the yeah. time... They were the best of the best. You had, you know, right. Ant-Man and uh, Hulk. And the fact that Robert Downey Jr. just nailed that character, he oh was Tony God. Stark, is Tony Stark. I wouldn't say he nailed it. I would say he redefined what Iron Man is for the modern, not just moviegoer, but the modern yeah. comic book reader, because a lot of what, you know, they did over in the MCU shaped the stories that they were telling, of course, in the comics. And and Tony, and if Stark, it sells, you're going to go well, with it, Tony you're going to follow that. Been a guy to shy away from the spotlight, yeah. And just it RDJ like just it. has that charisma, and and I mean, he became you know, because for years, for many, 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 many years. They went with the nobody knew Tony Stark was Iron Man. Iron Man was Tony's bodyguard. That's why he was always close by. Except there were a few that knew, like um, early on in the seventies, maybe in the mid, might have been the mid seventies. Um, but you know, it's a good thing Tony it takes Stark, away the whole secret Thor, identity thing, that Tony whole trope. Stark and Thor. Um, they knew each other's secret right. identity. They were the only two Avengers but, that did, like except, for, except for, you know, at one point, everybody knew that Janet Van Dyne and and Hank Pym were their right. alternate identities. And then, you know, Steve Rogers sort of, kind of kept his identity secret, but it wasn't a huge secret. Most of the Avengers knew. Right that Steve Rogers was Captain America. The second team of Avengers that took over in, I want to say, four, issue 14, issue 17, right. something like that. You know, they all knew Steve Rogers was Captain America, and that was Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Hawkeye. Was there somebody else? Um. I think that was it because they called it Vision. Cap. Was Vision in there? No, it, the Vision was later. He wasn't around. He was later. Uh, issue 53, 56, something like that. And in the MCU, Vision became probably one of my favorite characters. You know, Age of Ultron. He's, he's much, he's a much love different it. character. They depowered him un unfairly in Infinity War because he should have been much more powerful they had to kind of and they've had to do that with they've had that problem in the mcu with uh thor having to kind of depower him as well you know can't be well, as you gotta, you gotta remember in the comic books thor's biggest weakness was he couldn't anytime that he threw mjolnir mm -hmm. he had to have it back he had to have Anytime Mjolnir left his hand, he had to have it back in his hand within like I think a minute. I'm losing you here. Because if Are you there, okay. can you hear me? You, yeah, you just um, froze up for a second. Okay. So say what um, you were saying. Whenever Thor let go of Mjolnir, 
he had to have it back minutes. within he had to have it back in his hand within a minute otherwise he would turn into donald blake oh interesting i didn't know that now in the mid 80s they kind of might have been a little before the mid 80s they kind of got rid of that and they kind of got rid of the donald blake secret identity it's a whole convoluted yeah thing there it's and just something you don't need you know it's just it's easier to have right. one character now, than... that was that was his big weakness is you know mjolnir always returned to his hand but if for some reason it didn't within a minute he reverted to his mortal form so what if it was coming back to him and he turns back the minutes passed would it smack him in the head and kill him <laughs> no it wouldn't because the the hammer has an enchantment on it too that when uh, he is in yeah. his mortal form mm -hmm. it's a walking stick it turns into a walking stick well couldn't he put his good eye out <laughs> it might have put his good eye out okay <laughs> unfortunately but uh, you get a splinter yeah that happens in the so, wrong place though. but as time went on yeah the the more popular characters became the more a list guys like spider-man right. and x-men and I'm gonna, it was just kind of they didn't get the best writers they didn't get the best artists and it just i want to say on this momentous um 170th episode here You've done the impossible. You've taken my place and actually gone longer <laughs> and extended us almost an hour here on the last one, which I'm not complaining, but I do kind of have to wrap it up. Yes. Um, yes. Let's, let's, I, I got to feed all the chickens and all the cows in the back 40. Yes, I'm sure. And all that stuff I'm and sure. whatever else. I'm needed at Avengers Tower later. It's and I don't know. Homework. Norman Osborne called me. I don't know what he wants. Oh. <laughs> Don't don't answer that call. I'm not taking it. I'm not that taking the call. Crazy. <laughs> so, oh dear. Uh, well, thank you for joining me on this episode. Every anybody who's still listening or made I'm it this far, nobody's listening, but it's okay. Well, we got no, we got two people. Well, that's, in there, that's so. true. Somebody might be listening to the podcast. Form. <laughs> they they they're still trying to watch the first oh, hour. Or so, century from now, historians yeah. are going to find. The audio version of this and they're gonna be like what in the hell are these oh. fools talking about <laughs> hey we we did a good hour uh, a little over an hour or so where we were totally on topic then it turned into a free-for-all but it all makes sense it's a lot of good knowledge for anybody that cares to listen even if you listen in increments you know you're gonna learn something because we we know a lot about comics yeah, and other stuff about comic books and stuff that's none of this stuff that'll help us in the real world but you no, know that'll help the real world <laughs> I can't, I, can't, I can't show you a YouTube video on how to, uh, uh, I don't know, repair a car or something. I have I actually, when I have to do that stuff, I have to watch a YouTube video on how to do it. So. You're, you're not the only one. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, that reminds me. I'm like, all of a sudden, it's, we've gotten rain recently, and the grass has decided, oh, it's time to grow. And I'm like, I just cut that like a week ago or so. Yeah, my guys came back. They started back last week. And then I'm going to have to go out there this week and cut the grass. Dogs I don't barked do that. the entire time they were mowing the grass. Then when they went yeah. in the backyard after the guys were gone, they wanted to bark at everything in the backyard because my puppy does the same. My yard. <laughs> somebody came to the door tonight and I was like, are you going to answer? And I was like, no, I'm not going to answer. Is somebody trying to sell something soliciting? They're not supposed to. They want you to, but, uh, to, to, to so, go <laughs> but my dog's no good. He's running to the window by the door and he's barking at the door and then he's running back and looking at me. So it's obvious I'm there. The person outside can't see yeah. me and I'm not trying to be rude. I'd normally open the door, but I'm like, no, not today. <laughs> you need one of them ring doorbells, man. Uh, what do you want? What do you want? I'm watching you. Get off my porch. <laughs> Mutants. <laughs> I, I need to get. I want to get. I want to get. I want to get one of those. I want to get. I want to get one of those sound bites that says uh, "Omega" when I walk in or when my phone rings. Uh, um, omega level mutant. Omega, omega, omega level mutant detected. I can't do the Sentinel voice. But. It'll, it'll say "Omega level geek." <laughs> but um anywho well thank you for joining me everybody yes my check pleasure. out digital caveman's channel and uh subscribe to him subscribe, subscribe to, me. to geek home world yeah on youtube 
to everyone you watch on YouTube. I know there's two people in here. We had maybe three people in the live stream. So uh, two people have hit the thumbs up button. So whoever this other person lurking or whoever you are, just hit that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe and enable notifications. I watch a bunch of stuff. We'll talk uh, more about X Men '97 coming up and other things. Hey, maybe, we actually we actually finally t- we'll talk about it on my channel. Yeah. Hey, we yeah. talked about Apple and some tech. I know you're not an Apple guy, but I'm not an Apple guy either. But uh, yeah, I know about it. But you've always so we, wanted to be. No, I I had opportunities, and I'm like, yeah, it's an easier interface. But I've just always like Droid, well, Android. You're welcome for talking you off the ledge, my friend. Yes. <laughs> I want, it's I want to buy this Apple computer. Don't you buy that Apple computer. You're paying too much for it. For what you get, don't do it. It's just like my lusting after the Surface products for years. And like one day they're going to get cheap enough. But they're not. They just keep getting more expensive. They, they won't. I, I, I'll tell you, man, you no. get more use out of a convertible laptop than you will out of the screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I already have. <laughs> so, so, you know, so. But it's good. It's I have good. a terrible, I, I like it. If I need to flip it over and use it tablet style. I love mine. I don't use it as much as I, I can use it. But I, I don't, don't use, use it that way as much as I thought yeah, I, I would. I don't either as much as I thought I was going to. I, you know, I originally thought, well, I'm going to try to get into this digital art and do some drawing and and it just never it never it never happened once i start getting getting clients and stuff i might utilize it more so you know i'm kind of future proof and i hope in in a sense you know i I, I still like it It, it's still uh yeah you know it, it does help me out i can flip it around like if i'm on the road editing videos or something and yeah that's what it's it's whatever works for your workflow it's about your doll you know it's 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 whatever suits you the best it's not chasing brands or specs it's whatever actually works for you um i think mine has a fingerprint scanner or at least there's an indent indentation for one but I don't think it actually does that unless I haven't enabled it. May, it may be one of those models where that's one of those. Uh, Could be an option, you, you know. Yeah, you can get it in there, but it doesn't necessarily, that particular model. And the matter. the other thing is, you know, the, um, I don't know what the other thing is that I was going to say. I don't know. This has a built-in SD SD card reader, and I checked in there hoping my card was in the laptop. <laughs> it's not. It's like, dang it. I don't know where that thing is. That that thing costs a lot of money. I've used that thing for years. It was a Roadcaster brand, a road brand. So, you know, it came with it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can replace it. But I know. I could just get a off the market one. Cost. I'm going to have to do that sooner than later because I right now I don't have the capacity to record on the Roadcaster Pro in it upsets me because that's my backup backup ah, 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 ah. oh lord i'm hearing the crows it must be time to go <laughs> all righty well, well thank you 45th time yeah good night everybody a three hour live stream episode good, good wow morning, actually but um i'm really too tired to upload this but I it was homework fun. man i got homework to do I got so much to do your homework upload it monday <laughs> i don't know it'll get there when it gets there I know. I hate you, Digital Gate Man. You're I the hate you. Reason. Just get off my channel. My channel now. I, I love your shirt. I, I have mine's fa- old and faded. Mine's fresh and severe. It's all it's, it's just starting to get crackly. Yeah, mine it's mine nice faded and crackled a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, all righty. Well, well, thank you for for taking hours out of your life for yes, the podcast yes, here. I've been recording. And good luck. How many subs you're up to now? Subs, your... I am three oh, subs away from 700. Woo-hoo. You're going to get there. So you're it's, only it's 650 race, ahead of me. It's a race <laughs> right now to see if I'm going to hit 700 subs first or 700 episodes. That's true. Because next week I'm dropping 695 through 699. Dang. So if I can get three subs this week, 
or even by not this Monday, but next Monday, if I hit, you know, get that third sub on the same day, that 700th sub on the same day, I'm dropping episode 700. That would be awesome. While we're talking tech a little bit, um, I should get the Opus clip I've been looking at, even the free version. And I could take like this three hour stream and split it up and even make smaller content that could drive could drive shorts, you know, and more more stuff to the channel here. Right. There's opportunities, but let AI do it because I'm not going to sit here and chop up a three hour episode. You know, I was going to go back on my last live stream and put in chapters, which I may still do that if I get time, but I don't have time for stuff like that. Well, you know, I just need to get the content I'm, done. You know, I'm I'm dropping chapters in all my stuff this year yeah i mean that's a good thing to do it's and good to put that as part of work because i appreciate that doing it all along but i was doing it for a while in my episodes when i was really kind of in my groove and then things just got disrupted it's, and it's it's easy so busy I, know, I know i know how to put it in there now and well that's and, part of your workflow yeah uh, if you make it part of your workflow it can happen uh, so it it's it's not that bad and now all i have to do you know when i go i i got the two buddy and use the reuse information tab. And so all right, I have to do right. is change a few things, uh, change the numbers for the times. Well, like with my podcast, Libsyn is like that, you know, cause they've, they've been my host for the audio podcast for yeah, well, the right. 10 years that I've been doing this and well, even longer, probably when I was yeah, in the longer, order, I guess. you were using Lisbon, we were still doing, uh, cause we were on digital man cave was on my, it, it was, was a funny I name. Heard. It was on Lisbon. Not all of I don't think all of it was on Lisbon. Not all of it was on Lisbon. We switched because okay. um what the, was it called? The, last, the second half of it was. Right, right. What was it? What was it called? Um my podcast something or something like it had a I remember a weak kind of sounding name, but I, we I had you no, know, I couldn't tell you because you we know had thousands of all, listeners on there. That was all your yeah. Friend. That's well, I've always been I've always been the oh, tech guy yeah, behind yeah. everything, which is so funny that like when you finally got on the YouTube and you really started grinding uh, over a year ago and and I was I was really taken yeah, aback. I was like taking that back to four years ago. Was it longer than that? It's I'm in season four now, dude. It's been Holy. four years. What did I say over here? Uh, I'm in I'm, yeah, oh my gosh, it's 2024. You're right. So it was during the pandemic you really were able to. Well, I started. I started in twenty the um the January of twenty one. Okay. Wow. And I was surprised. And then you were on somebody's live streams like you haven't been on my podcast for a while. I was I was pissed, but I was like I introduced you to YouTube, and then you didn't really do anything with it. I mean, you had a channel, and then I was actually doing more because I was doing more with Savannah on film, and that really built that up. And then that kind of is on hiatus. So I can figure out now that I'm somewhere else, you know, where I'm going to. Now that you're not in Savannah and you're not right. in film. Not directly in film anymore. Film. Yeah. Even though I've recently starred in a couple of films, some student project films <laughs> as an actor, they're getting me as an actor. So maybe those, I've got. Those, those don't count. I know they're, they're kind of like, you know, the film community where I came from. It doesn't really count. It's nice to say, but it's not really anything. Um. We're just getting a grade. We're not trying to make great art. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, Moonfruit, moonfruit.com. That was the website. Was that was Moonfruit. the website. That was the hosting it website. Didn't, it didn't have any, you know, you couldn't access the uh, the podcast directly on there. I think we had links or something, but, but and they didn't have everything wasn't as good as Libsyn. Libsyn has been solid as a rock since I've had them. You had to pay for it. But Moonfruit was free. Moonfruit was free Moonfruit back in the time. Moonfruit was free, yes. There was, you could get better stuff paying for it, but you could get, it was pretty basic stuff. Right. And we've always been on iTunes and even with this podcast. So I haven't missed a beat. That's one reason I hadn't switched over Geek Home World because I don't go on iTunes. I'm not a Mac guy. I'm becoming right. a Mac guy because of my job and um, or impending stuff in school. But um, but yeah, not having 
being on Apple, I just, I haven't really done anything. I don't remember the last time. I don't even think I have an iPod or any, or iPad or anything that, you know, I don't really, I'm not in that I ecosystem. Have, I have zero Apple related products. Yeah. So I don't even have, I don't even have Apple TV. And, and I'm and not really I, yeah, on there. I've got nothing against Apple. It's just, I'm just a droid kind of guy and a Windows guy, but, you know, I'm learning to diversify more. So, you know, we'll see what the future yeah, holds. Because they're going to train you in school. Apple. Yeah, well, they are. They already are, you know, and I actually like working on the Big Mac. Yeah, profession. The Big Mac. <laughs> yeah, I said I like working on the Big Mac. I like eating a Big Mac, too, I know you like with cheese. That. But, um, but yeah, the, the screen's much bigger. Like, even this laptop, I, this is like yeah, more a field kind of thing. Uh, here's the thing you about know. screen size. You can get a bigger screen. It doesn't matter if you're using Apple. If you're True. using Windows, yeah. if you're using Android. If well, I using- may I may try to when it's in the studio here as an aside, the old TV I got, maybe I can hook it up, you know, even if I can't because it's an older TV. I don't know. I think I can stream to it, but that when you're in the program, you can't stream the programs usually to it. So I might maybe be able to just, you just get go find you the HDMI. long HDMI cores you can find. I'm sure in one of these boxes I have plenty, right? <laughs> good, like a 12 foot HDMI yeah. cord, be good. And then, um, yeah, and then I can just um, go ahead and use that as a monitor. And I, I have a dream, kind of. I was going to come up with this cool concept because I'm starting to get enough monitors where they're all old and different sizes, so it's not going to work. But I thought about enclosing this and kind of in the round, like having monitors all around me kind of thing or some kind of – I may do something oh, really oh, artsy. You want you want the 89 Bat Cave. I do, I do. I want the Michael <laughs> Keaton Bat Cave. Uh, but – um. I don't know. We'll get you a green it's screen, really man. Good. Put a green screen behind you. Light it up real good. I have one. I was I was given a green screen that I pulls up and everything and can put behind me. It can actually hook to the oh, chair. Kind of the chair. Oh no! But I ain't I'm talking like about those junky ones. No, I'm this is actually a, it's actually a nicer one. You you'd be How surprised. Big? I, it wasn't. How big is it? How big is it? It's like it's it could do. It okay, could, that might could that might you know, work. Yeah. When it folds out and it's in a and it's got a I'm nice thinking, little I'm case. Of them like oval shaped ones that. It was a gift like my mother-in-law got me years ago and, and I've used it a couple of times, but then, you know, green screen wasn't what it was. And I had my older computer, which was slower, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, got to figure out how to work the chroma key in that program before you. Yeah. Can. And that's something I guess I'll be, I'll be learning as well in class, but. um, Yeah. You won't be learning it in this class because this one is just yeah. like basic video editing, right? When yeah. But in- apparently we're doing movies now. I, I, I guess I didn't read the syllabus good enough. And uh, so I didn't think I'd be starring in films and and making them, but anyway, I'm not complaining. It's always good to to go now. Nature, nature beckons. Well, thank you for flying the X jet while I I had to (laughs) take care of business myself. All right. Well, it was all that interesting when I was talking about it was just, you know, my channel. That's that's fine. Well, good luck with everything. We'll talk soon. I know. And um, thank you all everybody for listening. Uh, please uh, like subscribe, subscribe to the channel, listen to the podcast and the sorry bell. for the super long three hour episode. No, you're not. Eventually the, I'm not. And it, it's what it is and, and all that, but thank you everybody. And the two people or two or three people that were here live and the ones that have stuck through it. And thank yes, you. And the ones that are going to listen post. We appreciate you first. every single person. So. Thank you for being here. Let me let me roll let me roll out the the um, outro here, which is that I've got a we got to work on an outro because I've had the intro here, so I'm yeah. just gonna roll out on the outro here, and when that ends, then I'll I'll cut the recording. But thank you very much, Digital K Man, um, and uh, I'm Ed of Geek Home World. Thank y'all for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Welcome to the Geek Home World podcast. I'm your host, Ed, a.k.a. The Savage Tech Man. We talk film, TV, and tech, all from a geek perspective. You can find us on X, Instagram, Facebook, and you can subscribe and follow on YouTube at Geek Home World. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Be a part of the Geek Home World.